Sometimes a coach becomes a legend, not by being flashy or loud, but by being honest and true, true to himself and to his team. Don Nealon is such a man, as recognizable in West Virginia as the Blue Ridge Mountains, a man whose coaching career is coming to a close. Last week in his final home game, the Mountaineers did him proud, but their season is not quite finished. There are still a few things left to do. They will not go out quietly. They can't. They need to say goodbye as their coach meets an old foe for the final time. Pittsburgh's regular season is also coming to an end. It's been a positive year, a winning season for the first time since 1991. The Panthers have postseason hopes of their own, but before that, they'll say goodbye to a familiar friend. College football on CBS. Today, West Virginia takes on Pittsburgh in the backyard brawl. Twenty-one years as the head coach at West Virginia and today Don Nealon's final regular season game as the head man of the Mountaineers. Today also marks the final ever college football game at Three Rivers Stadium. West Virginia fans, they'll be well represented here. It's not far away. Pittsburgh fans are ready for the Backyard Brawl 93rd edition and we've got it for you here on CBS Sports. Here come the Pittsburgh Panthers. And now the West Virginia Mountaineers make their way onto the field. West Virginia against Pittsburgh at Three Rivers Stadium in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Both teams enter action at six and four. Both teams got off to great starts this year and hoping to finish the regular season strong. Welcome everybody. I and Eagle along with Mark May, a guy that knows a little bit something about the backyard brawl. He played in four of them. Outland Trophy winner from Pittsburgh in 1980. And stakes are very high here, Mark, today. Both teams feel like they need a win in order to ensure the fact that they'll get into a bowl game. Let's start with West Virginia. A lot of emotion. Don Nealon, final game and end of an era. He is West Virginia football. He definitely is. He's the dean of West Virginia football. He took over this program 21 years ago, a program that was in disarray and total chaos. Through hard work, determination, and great recruiting, he has built West Virginia University football into a prominent football program. On the other side of the field, Walt Harris has also resuscitated a program, and one thing he's made very very clear. In fact, he's made no bones about it. He wants Pittsburgh to be known as wide receiver university. Right now, he's got a heck of a one-two punch at the head of the class. Well, the one-two punch, look, Keith Grimm at one wide receiver, Antonio Bryant at the other, two of the top receivers in the country. Antonio Bryant is one of the three finalists for the Bolitnikoff Award, awarded to the best wide receiver in the country. And Latith Grimm last season alone had over 1,100 yards in receiving. Last time these two teams met, Pittsburgh needed to win to get a winning season in 1999. It didn't happen that way. West Virginia just blew out the Panthers, and Avon Coburn had his way with the Pittsburgh defense. Well, it was a pummeling nine, and Avon Coburn, 210 yards, three touchdowns in that game. When we spoke with Walt Harris, he said, first and foremost, we have to stop the run. It's West Virginia and Pittsburgh. Right now, let's go onto the field. Welcome in the third member of our broadcasting team, Dwayne Ballin. I and this is officially called the backyard brawl. These schools are very close to each other, do not like each other. In fact, Morgantown, home of West Virginia University, just 90 miles south along I-79 from here. In fact, school officials told me a short while ago that they expect at least between 15 and 20,000 West Virginia fans to make the trek from Morgantown. From the sounds of things, when West Virginia hit the field, I think they're all here. The Panthers want nothing more than to send them home with their heads held down low. If Chuck Woolery were here, he would say this is no love match. Ian? 
All right, Dwayne, thank you very much. The series note, Pittsburgh leading the all-time series, but West Virginia has won seven of the last eight. We mentioned the last meeting, November of 1999, and the Mountaineers with a 52-21 blowout victory. Walt Harris, now in his fourth year as the head coach of the Pittsburgh Panthers. He won the 1997 Big East Coach of the Year Award. The overall record, 19-25, and 25, and this is a pivotal game for him in his head coaching career with the Panthers. Well, this game, a oh, victory for Walt Harris to put an exclamation point on his program into his fourth year. He would like this team to get back to national recognition and to win a bowl game and to go to a bowl game. But in order to do that, they feel they have to win today to beat West Virginia. One, it's a huge rivalry. I played in this game four years, won four of those games. For Walt Harris, he knows it's important for his seniors to go out with a victory in the backyard ball. <laughs> So you're going to get it in early that you won all four. <laughs> Just not enough that you played in all four. You had to mention that you won all four. And Don Nealon talked about the emotion. He told us the other day that emotion can carry you through the first couple of minutes, but once these two teams settle onto the field, nobody is going to care that this is his final regular season game as a coach. Well, you don't and you can't. And first of all, when players get on the field, they'll realize the first time that they're hit right in the mouth with somebody's helmet, they have to forget about emotion and go out there and concentrate on the responsibility. Todd James kicking off for West Virginia. Torrey Cox, the return man, takes it out of the end zone, and he gets belted as he crosses the 15-yard line. West Virginia comes out flying with Frank English on special teams. They like to call themselves the Black Hats on special teams. A salute to the coal mining industry down south. And I'm with a shot like that. That sets the tempo for West Virginia. You talk about emotion. We talked about it before in Don Nealon. That's the emotion that you want to see that can help you. Line of scrimmage will be just outside the 17-yard line for the Pittsburgh Panthers. Coming off a 7-0 win over Temple, John Terman. The starting quarterback, the senior, was actually pulled in that game, and David Priestley stepped in. Expect to see Priestley here today on a handoff. Keeping Barlow remaining on his feet and then clothesline as he crosses the 20 by Sean Hackett. Let's get, out, get it out of the way early. They call him Kevin Henry around here. He told us it's actually pronounced Keevan Barlow. Lasaka Polite, Antonio Bryant, Latif Grimm, and Mike Bosnick. Those are the starters. On the offensive line, McCurley is the one change, normally the center. He shifts over to left guard, and Chad Reed, the sophomore, will start at center. They wanted a little more experience on the left side of that offensive line. On a second and five. Terman, the number one ranked passer in the Big East this year. And a long count. Four receivers set. Terman wants to throw it. He does. Finds a seam, and Lamar Slade. First down for Pittsburgh, Jeff Shore to the 35. The West Virginia defense, Lake, Upchurch, and Davis on that front line, playing in a 3-4 set for the Mountaineers. Linebacking core, Grant Wiley has been tremendous. Kyle, Kyle Caden, Carter, and Edmonds, the rest of the core in those linebacking group. And in the secondary, Bryant and Frazier, the freshman, getting the start at corners. And Hackett and Sherrod are the safeties. On a first and 10 now from the 34 for Pittsburgh. Barlow in the backfield, he'll get the call. Barlow is tripped up, loses the ball as he hit the turf. West Virginia able to recover with Lance Frazier, but will they reward them to football? They will not. Pittsburgh holds on to it. Nine, the Pittsburgh Panthers, what they want to do is set the temple on first down and run the football. Here's a replay at the play. Keevan Barlow has to hold on to this ball with two hands. He's got it in one hand. It gets stripped out right before he hits the ground. It's just concentration. The first couple of plays in every game, your emotions carry over. But right now, you've been knocked around a few times. Forget about the emotions and concentrate about your responsibility. Barlow is a hometown guy from Pittsburgh. He's so proud of what he has done to help me build this program in his four years. On second and six, a rollout for Terman, and too short for Latif Grimm. Skimmed it off the turf. Richard Bryant had the coverage for West Virginia, and now a third and six coming up from the 38. And we spoke with Walt Harris, and he told us that the confidence in John Terman at this point, he doesn't work well with all of his tools at this point in the game. And for a big guy at 6'4 to roll out, that's not him. And we saw to John Terman, he told us point blank, he does better when he just reacts to football. If he tries to force something, particularly if he's running with the ball, that's when he has to Terman, a junior college transfer. Numbers have been pretty good, but you're right. Harris was concerned about the inconsistency. And now a third and six for Pitt. West Virginia coming on a blitz. Terman steps up in the pocket. Terman breaking one tackle and then hit. 
as he crosses the 40. Short of a first down, Sean Hackett will be given credit for the stop. Jason Davis was among those West Virginia players applying pressure. It was a gain of five and a fourth and one. And a nice job of West Virginia coming with a blitz here, a delay blitz around the corner by Edmonds, and great coverage down the field to play. Everybody's covered. Turman has to take the ball down and run with it, pick up positive yardage. But the rush on West Virginia gets pressure on Turman. He's got to pull it down and run. His first read's not there. Pull it down and make something positive happen. Andy Lee will punt it for Pittsburgh. He's the freshman, gets it off Antonio Brown, so explosive. And Brown with a fair catch made at the 18. West Virginia will have the football for the first time after the 39-yard punt. The Home Depot College football will continue here on CBS. Let's go, Pitt, let's the sleek 200 horsepower Chevy Monte Carlo SS. <laughs> Green. The side you show the world is up to you. What's going on? Hey. Wow, this is nice. But I thought Stacy said if you bought new tools, she gets a new dining room set. Yeah, she did. So where are the table and chairs? You're standing on them. <laughs> Fine woodworking tools from Rigid. Name proven by pros since 1923. Take our 12-inch compound miter saw, the best choice for deck building, remodeling, and finish work. Rigid. Buy them at the Home Depot, where low prices are just the beginning. All right. Who can solve this? Mr. Montez. Last Saturday in the Army Reserve, I figured out how to link up 23 Bradleys, 40 tanks, 60 Humvees, 4 medevac units, and 7,000 troops on the move. On Monday, class was no sweat. Not bad, Mr. Montez. As little as one weekend a month, two weeks a year, Army Reserve. Justice. Texas Rangers. But CBS Saturday, one of these Rangers will fall. All new Walker, CBS Saturday. West Virginia and Pittsburgh, no score. 12 14 to play in the first. Don Nealon told us earlier this week he tried to keep things normal for his team with all the emotion. On a pitch, Antonio Brown. Trying to take it to the outside and not much there for him to work with. Pittsburgh's defense was ready with Mark Ponko chasing him to the sideline. Brad Lewis, quarterback for the West Virginia Mountaineers. First time that he has taken part in the backyard brawl. Junior out of Ohio. This season, it's been up and down for Lewis. He has the tools. Last week in the victory over East Carolina, Lewis 12 of 24, 290 yards and two touchdowns. A loss of three on first down, second and 13. John Terry in as a receiver, three wide out set for Lewis. Looks to throw it, floating, knocked up in the air, and incomplete. Sean Burton had an opportunity, the tight end diving. It'll be third and long. West Virginia offense, Avon Coburn, what a talented sophomore he is. Wes Hours, maybe the biggest fullback you'll ever see, 290 pounds. Wilson, Dixon, Gilliam, Nell, and Russell on that offensive line. We talked about the Pittsburgh wide receiving core. West Virginia's wide receiving core, not that shabby. Not bad at all, and, and probably the best four wide receivers in the Big East Conference are on the field today, and definitely the best pair on each side of the ball because both wide receivers on each side of the ball, they complement each other very well. West Virginia looking to spread it. Lewis shotgun on a third and 13. First possession for the Mountaineers. Lewis again, a little flip over the middle, and Pittsburgh's defense fired up in the early going. Avon Coburn was the intended receiver, and West Virginia will be forced to punt. 
One thing about the Panther defense this year under Paul Rhodes, first year defensive coordinator, very aggressive. All upfield rushes, stunts, blitzes. They want to put pressure on the quarterback and make the quarterback feel he has to release the ball sooner than he wants to. That's what happens on this play. They wanted to get a middle screen, dump it off in the middle of the field. Too much pressure on the quarterback. West Virginia held out of the football 13 seconds. Mark Fazolari on the boot. Antonio Bryant. They'll catch it at the 45, try to make a move to the outside. Bryant continues to dance and then is hit at the 43. Brian King making the stop on special teams. Right now, let's take a look at the Exxon playbook. The Pittsburgh Panthers like to spread out the defense, which means they want to spread out their offense to get four wide receivers, two on one side, two on the other. And they like to get the defense to split out a little bit. Then they want to take the ball and hand it off to the big back, and they call it 40 gut to hit the ball in the middle of the field to get positive yards. You want to get five hats on five defenders. The offensive line, five men up there. The defensive front, five men there. Everybody gets their hat on someone. Pick up positive yardage on the play. And we've already seen it in the early going. David Priestley has come in at quarterback. So Terman, the senior, just getting one series here in the first. Here's Priestley on the handoff. Barlow, big hole. Still on his feet. Here goes Barlow. Takes it the distance for the touchdown. A 56-yard scamper for the senior. And Pittsburgh takes the lead. Nine, we talked about spreading the offense out. That's what Walt Harris wants to do. He wants to create a mismatch. And you have your big, powerful tailback and Keevan Barlow at 235 pounds. Just hit it and get it right here. Hand the ball off, take off, foul your blockers. You spread the offense out, it spreads the defense thin. Then he makes a tremendous effort on going over one defender low and one defender high and taking the ball into the end zone. That's great balance on Keevan Barlow. He's a big time player in this offense. That's what they need out of him today. Nick Locks for the extra point. Kyle Caden, one of the best tacklers on this West Virginia defense, had a chance to bring him down, but Barlow kept firing ahead. Pittsburgh with a 7-0 lead. 93rd edition of the Backyard Brawl. That Nakatani merger is brilliant. We've got to move on that now. Talk to me about the Nakatani merger. It's big. Deals like that don't happen overnight. I wonder what brought those two together. <laughs> you make that putt, Nakatani. You got yourself a deal. See the story behind the numbers. Go to cbs.marketwatch.com. Every touch. A hand. It might seem ordinary, but not when it belongs to someone you love and you'd like to slip something extraordinary onto it. Every look. This Christmas, come to K Jewelers, where our three stone diamond rings start from just $599. Every kiss. And every K diamond is hand selected for exceptional beauty. Every kiss begins with K. K Jewelers. Let's hear it for the lady. The one whose work is never done. Without you, none of us would even be here. Here's to you, Mom. From a car with the right stuff to get you through it all. Chevy Malibu. The car you depend on every day. Just like you, we'll be there. The Home Depot College Football on CBS is sponsored by the Home Depot, the United States Army, Exxon, and by Chevy Trucks. It's the longest run of the season for Keevan Barlow and his fifth rushing touchdown of the year. Pittsburgh with a 7-0 lead on West Virginia here early in the first. And I had a wonderful job of first vision by Keevan Barlow and then making his cuts and reading his blockers up front, being patient with the play and just outrunning the defense. Nick Lotz will kick it off for Pittsburgh. Sean Terry and Phil Braxton are deep, standing at their own four-yard line. Short kick. It'll be taken by Terry at the 11. Terry looking for a lane. He's got one. 
and spilled out across the 35-yard line. If he broke through that wave, Terry could have taken it back as Lotz cut him down low. 23-yard return. Let's take another look at the touchdown on Keevan Barlow's touchdown run. Here at the line of scrimmage, he's got to feel his blockers. He's got to make a cut because he's got great vision right here. He goes to the right, rolls it, brings it back to the middle of the field. He eludes a tackler here, and he's got two of them right there. Now watch his balance. This is a tremendous run by Keevan Barlow right there. He could easily have gone down, but no, he keeps his balance, and here's the speed. Turn on the after jets. It's warp speed now. He rolls in for the touchdown. Top 10 on Pittsburgh's all-time rushing list. Barlow getting Pittsburgh on the board. And West Virginia with a four-receiver set on a first and 10 at their own 35. The shotgun, Lewis, inside handoff, Coburn, and ridden to the turf at the line of scrimmage by Brian Knight. What a season Knight is having. You want to talk about improvement from last year to this year. This might be one of the most improved players in the country. The Pittsburgh defense, Knight highlights a strong and young defense. Junior, junior, senior, sophomore on that front line with Knight, Conlin, White, and Smith. Look at the linebackers. Brian Beinecke getting the start here today with Amir Purifoy and Gerald Hayes. And the secondary, Robinson, Spencer, Walker, and Ponko. On a second and ten. And a flag comes down. We'll have our first penalty. And we'll hear from Dennis Hennigan, our referee, for the first time today. False start, offense, five-yard penalty, still second down. Second and 15. So they'll bring this one back five yards and a second and 15 now for West Virginia. Mountaineers having a tough time getting into a rhythm offensively. And that's some of the problems they've had this year. They haven't had fast starts, and I'm sure Don Nealon is concerned right now. Just to get his offense going, they can't even get a running play off of the positive yards. They did get Coach Neal in a win in his final game in Mountaineer Field. Now trying to do it in his final regular season game on a second and 15. Play action. Lewis throws it to the sideline and caught by Braxton. Big gainer on second down into Pittsburgh territory, and he's brought down at the 41. And it all starts up front. Great protection. Even the fullback, Wes Hours, gets involved, but on the outside, one-on-one. -on -one. Make your plant. Go to the corner. Here's the route. The ball is perfect where it's placed. Concentrate on the ball. Now make something happen with the ball after you catch it. Good communication between quarterback, Rad Lewis, and his wide receiver, and Phil Braxton. Braxton beat Spencer on the play, and Ramon Walker, the free safety, was forced to come over and make the stop. And now a first and 10 at the 41. Looks to throw it again to the outside and incomplete. Corey Ivey, the senior, the intended receiver, Sean Robinson, had the one-on-one -on -one coverage. I'll tell you what, you talk about explosion from a defensive end. Brian Knight at the end of this play, he slips the, def the offensive tackle, goes inside, and watch the explosion after he beats the tackle here. He's got to throw him to the side, go inside. Now watch the quickness here from there to there and the explosion through to the quarterback. That's outstanding play. That's what you look for from big-time players, and he is definitely a big-time player. This guy used to be a wide receiver. It's incredible. He gained 25 pounds and grew an inch. We asked him if he planned on growing any more inches. He said, hopefully. You think it bottle it and sell it, he'd be a zoom. Second and 10 now. Six defensive backs. West Virginia continues to throw the football, and the catch made cleanly at the 35-yard line by Ivy. It's a gain of seven on second down. It'll be third and short. And Brad Lewis, they went to the shotgun to give him more time to throw the ball because of the aggressiveness of the Pittsburgh Panther defense. Here's just a quick out pattern by Corey Ivey. And Corey Ivey caught another pass. That extends his lead. He's third in the nation, first in the Big East. That's his 39th consecutive game of reception. That is a school record, and as you mentioned, a conference record as well. Third down conversions have been a problem for the Mountaineers. A third and three at the 34. Three receivers all to the top of your screen. Pittsburgh leading it, seven to nothing. Long count by Lewis, throw it underneath. Brown will try to create. Oh, 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 oh. Brown with the extra effort, getting very close to the marker. And it all depends on the spot. Walker and Purifoy combining on that stop. He was looking for the first down. Will they move the chains? 
And this is a quick play to the outside. You want to generate something quick. It's a quick flash and lightning screen. Ramon Walker has a chance at him, doesn't get him, slows him down enough for the rest of the defense to converge to keep him short of the first down. But for Ramon Walker, he's a big time hitter. He's got to break down, break down with the hips and make that tackle. They're going for it on fourth and one. Coburn in the backfield. Wes Hour is the big fullback in motion. Coburn gets the call. It's a wave of defenders, and Pittsburgh feels that they stopped him. Forward progress will be the defining reason as to whether or not they got the first down. I mean, this is going to be awful close, maybe the nose of the football, but, you know, if I've got a 290-pound fullback in Wes Hours that has only had one run in his career where he's lost yardage on fourth and a foot or fourth and a yard, he gets the ball in my mind. They decided to go with Coburn, releasing out of the backfield. Ryan Smith helping to lead the charge for the Pittsburgh defense. And Pittsburgh has stopped West Virginia. Ryan, that's the reason why if you need that yard, you give it to a good big man, not a good smaller man. And with Wes Hours at 290, he gets my vote to get this ball. He blocks on this play, but a great job of penetration by the Panther defense and staying low and coming in there and sticking with your helmet and keeping your shoulders low and converging on the football. This is a wonderful job of penetration and staying low by the Panther defense. Amir Purifoy first on the hit. He's the one that makes the big stick. Then the rest of the defense converges on the stop. But that's what you got to have. If you want to keep the momentum in a game like this after the first score, you stop them on from the back. So Pittsburgh got a first and 10 now at the 32. Priestley, the quarterback. Here's Barlow, just tripped off the long run before, and Barlow dancing his way ahead to the 33 yard line. They'll give him progress to the 34 for a gain of about two. Antoine Lake in on the stop for West Virginia. David Priestley. Last week, he was the catalyst offensively in that 7 to nothing win over Temple. Priestley 13 of 20, 154 yards, and a touchdown. That touchdown pass to Antonio Bryant. Priestley, transfer from Ohio State. Now a second and eight. Rushing yards, Pittsburgh dominating so far. Polite lining up as a receiver. Priestley to the sideline. Catch made by Bryant. Extending the arms. It'll be very close to a new set of downs. Right now, let's check in with Dwayne Ballant. Hi, and Priestley and Coach Walt Harris have a history that predates them coming together here at Pittsburgh University. When Harris was an assistant at Ohio State prior to coming to Pittsburgh, he recruited Priestley to go to Ohio State. Subsequently, he was offered and accepted the job here as head coach. So Priestley came to him and said, well, what should I do? I'm coming to Ohio State because you recruited me. Harris advised him to go to Ohio State, said it was a fine school, but if things did not work out for him, he had a place here at Pittsburgh, and now here they are. I now, Priestley only a junior. He should be the starting quarterback next year. On third and one, Keevan Barlow trying to force his way ahead, and he did not get the first down. No gain on the play. And the key to short yardage and goal line, if you're running the ball, don't stutter step. Watch Barlow right here. He's going to stutter step. You can't do that. You've got to take the ball and slam it in there, and you cannot hesitate. Either that or go over the pile. And the best I've ever seen. Marcus Allen in the NFL. Short, short yardage and goal line, he doesn't miss. He doesn't deviate at all. And, you know, here you look at Keevan Barlow. He goes where all the bodies are. If he cuts back to the right, it's a first down. Kyle Caden providing the hit on Barlow, and Pittsburgh will punt it away. Andy Lee, the punter. And Antonio Brown now standing at his own 16-yard line. Lee, 39 yards on his first punt of the game. Coming up on six minutes to play here in the first quarter. Lee gets it off. Brown lets it bounce, a high bounce. He'll take it and then go right down to the turf at the 17-yard line. 46 yards for Lee. Pittsburgh in front, 7-0. West Virginia looking to put some points on the board when we come back. Meet Carlos Sandoval, veteran Navy SEAL, trained to go through anything, equipped to survive it. The Chevy S10 Survival Pack, CD, automatic, air, aluminum wheels, over $1,300 in savings, plus $2,000 cash back. You might think all that comfort could weaken a Navy SEAL. Fat chance. Chevy S10. 
like a rock. Peter Friedman gets top-notch advice in everything he does. So why doesn't he get top-notch advice when he invests online? Simple. He doesn't know he can. See how we earn it. Solomon Smith Barney. This Saturday at Sears, we open extra early and we've marked on prices extra low. From 8 until noon, take 10% off everything, even sale prices. So don't fool around. It's the most important time of the year. Is your dandruff sending the wrong signals? Get Selsun Power. Doctors recommend Selsun Blue. So don't send the wrong signals. Get Selsun Power. That's a bad call. Hey, somebody better figure out how to run the ball. They were gonna knock you in the mouth. Hey! 11 members of West Virginia senior class playing their final regular season game. For Pittsburgh, 10 seniors playing in their regular season finale. And West Virginia has the football, a first and 10 at their own 17. And a trickery inside handoff for Coburn. And Coburn shot out of there like a rocket up the middle for a gain of seven. Pittsburgh special teams and some high snaps so far. Well, and the Panthers have had two snaps. Here's the first one. It's bobbled by the punter right here. But he does a great job of concentrating on the ball, holding on to it, and getting it off. Now, the second punt we're going to see is high. And the punts are made by Jonathan Sitter, the true freshman. He replaced a few weeks ago. He has been the replacement for their starting snapper. But this could be a problem for the Panthers. They have to have more control on their snaps and get him down because he's over on the sidelines right now practicing. For this game. Lee did a tremendous job just to get those punts off. On a handoff, Colbert looking to take it the distance. Avon Coburn is spilled out across the 40 yard line. Big Wes Hours provided a block. And West Virginia with its first true legitimate running play that worked. And what I like about this, they just hit it right up the gut and they hit it with speed. And keep an eye on Avon Coburn right there. He doesn't hesitate. Just hit it as fast as you can. There's a huge hole in the middle. Now it's outrun the defense. Right here, he's going to make a cut to pick a positive yardage. But that's what you want to do. Replace the ball. Smart move by Coburn. He knew that the traffic was coming behind him. The tacklers are coming from his right. Take the ball from your right hand, put it in your left hand, protect the football. Smart move. He's dealt with some ankle injuries this year. That's why his numbers haven't been as impressive as they were in his first season last year. 39-yard run. Give it off to Coburn again. Trying to work it inside for a gain of two as he brings it to the 35-yard line. Stop made by White and Conlon. And I've always wondered, after a back has a long run, you take him out for a play, get him a rest. I've been in the huddle thousands of times where the back has a long run, and he's breathing hard in the huddle. So what do the coach does? The next play, hand him the ball again, and he always gets two or three yards. Then you take him out of the game. Yeah, but a guy like you that didn't exactly run the 40-yard dash all that often really wouldn't know what that felt like, right? Let me tell you what. As an offensive lineman, if I had to run 40 yards in a game, we were in trouble. <laughs> Big trouble. Maybe as a releasing tight end, nothing. 12 yards. Second and eight. Timing pass. Lewis puts it upstairs on the fade. Incomplete. Sean Terry, the intended receiver. And Shante Spencer. One-on-one -on -one coverage. And Shante Spencer, it looks like he got there just a little bit early on this play, but he got away with one. He's up on the line of scrimmage press, but he doesn't touch him. He just rolls off, runs stride for stride with him, down the field to play. Watch him when he turns his shoulders back, his right arm comes across before the ball's there, right across his face. That's not one penalty, that's two. Spencer is a freshman. He is new to the cornerback position this year, a quarterback at a free safety in high school, native of Pittsburgh, Woodland Hills High School local high school here in Pittsburgh where Pittsburgh's done well recruiting in their own backyard but here's another key West Virginia on the roster 32 players from Pennsylvania they've done a great job recruiting in Pittsburgh play clock winding down they get it off on third and eight Lewis throws it towards the end zone back to the air and incomplete Antonio Brown the intended receiver Sean Robinson able to get a little piece of it and Brad Lewis needs to lead his wide receiver more on this play Antonio Brown has Sean Robinson beat on this play. Here it is. Force him up the field. It's a skinny post. Make the slant. Go straight down the field. Now, look, he has to slow up for the football. He has the defender beat. 
but the quarterback gets the ball deeper. It's a touchdown for West Virginia. Brown has run track for the Mountaineers, so he's quite capable of getting down the field in a hurry. An all-purpose threat. He was timed at 4.18 in the 40-yard dash. I used to be able to do that. Oh, yeah. 25. <laughs> 25 yards, I was king. They could have attempted a 53-yard field goal. Instead, it's a punt from Fazalar inside the five. And Swindoll is forced to bring it in. Fair catch. Well, the Army Heritage, we're going to take you back, 1970. It was 30 years ago. Pitt Stadium, Bobby Bowden's Mountaineers had the lead, but with less than a minute less in the game, Dave Havern found Bill Pilconis in the end zone, giving Pittsburgh a one-point victory, and the fans are reason to celebrate. Pitt over West Virginia. Denying that was a huge comeback for Pitt, one of the biggest in the history. Halftime, I believe, that was 35 to eight. West Virginia was just trouncing the Panthers, and they came out two tight ends, one back, and just mm. pounded the ball in the second half and ended up winning the football game. This is the oldest rivalry in the Big East, Pittsburgh leading the all-time series. They've played every year since 1943. Nick Goings is by himself in the backfield, four receivers, and Priestley takes a timeout. West Virginia fans making some noise at the 4.08 mark of the first. The Panthers in front, 7-0. The Home Depot has this Black & Decker reversible drill for an incredibly low 1984. You'll also find this Black & Decker jigsaw for an unbelievable price of just 1984. And this Black & Decker orbital sander, you guessed it, just 1984. Great tools at a great price. You'll find all three at the Home Depot. But you might want to hurry. Anyone with a workshop is going to want one. Can I help you? Yeah, hi. Uh, do you have that band I like? I, I was here a few years ago. I bought their last CD. I'm just looking for the new one. Amazon.com changed the way people shop. Uh, I'm sorry, what do I click on this to hear a sample? HP technology makes it happen. Winning his coach in West Virginia history, Don Nealon. He announced that he will retire at the end of the season on November the 4th. And West Virginia has won back to back games since that announcement. Mountaineers at six and four. Got it off to a good start this year and struggled in between with a three game losing streak. Play clock winding down. Priestley over the middle and a little too far ahead for Rod Rutherford, who's also the third string quarterback who's been playing all over the place at wide receiver. Don Neal in his first win as a head coach came back in 1968 coaching at his alma mater Bowling Green then went to West Virginia 1980 in between he had a short stint as an assistant with the Michigan Wolverines. First victory at West Virginia back on September the 6th 1980 41 to 27 over Cincinnati and a lot of wins since then. Overall record at West Virginia, 148, 92, and 4. 30 years as a head coach overall. And a second and 10 for the Panthers from just shy of the four. Priestley throwing miscommunication. On the near side, he was looking for Bryant, the All-American. You talk about miscommunication. Antonio Bryant's looking for a run block on this play, where it's definitely a pass play. Here it is, good protection up front. It's a timing pattern. Look at him, he's looking to pass block. Shield for somebody else. But they've got to get on the same page. It's an area where he's one on one out in the flat with Lance Frazier. It's a mismatch. He didn't even realize the ball was coming. Antonio Bryant, he broke Marvin Harrison's Big East yardage record last week in the win over Temple. He also broke his teammate Latif Grimm's school record for receiving yards. Bryant over 1,150 yards receiving this year as a sophomore on third down out of his own end zone. Priestley fights. Shovels it ahead. Rutherford picks it up. And Ron Rutherford is forced out of bounds at the 40-yard line. You talk about an incredible all-around play by Antonio Bryant. 
First, a tremendous route and catching the ball. He's going to lunge forward with long arms. He's got very long arms and catch the football right here. Now he's going to try to make something happen with it. He goes up, the ball stripped, but he has the wherewithal to tip it forward. He knows his teammates are coming to help. Tip it out there where you have a chance where your teammates are going to pick it up. That's exactly what happens. Rod Rutherford, Johnny on the spot, picks up the ball. Positive yardage for the Pittsburgh Panthers. Well, the problem right now for Pittsburgh, Antonio Bryant just left the field limping. Struggled to get to the sideline. And Bryant is not on the field right now. They are checking him out, the medical staff for Pittsburgh. On a first and ten for the Panthers. Pitt on the move. Priestley again to the outside. Farlow make that Grimm makes the catch. And Latif Grimm able to pick up about four yards on first down. Antonio Bryant. Big year as a freshman. What he's done in his sophomore year has been simply incredible. Number one in the nation for yards per game average. And if you look at this, the 1,154 yards, that's in nine games. Well, a flag on that play, so they're going to back Pittsburgh up. And there's Bryant now limping, trying to just walk it off. After the play was over, personal foul on the offense, 15 yards from the end of the play. It will be second down. So that great catch by Bryant now brought back after the 15-yard penalty takes away the great field position. And that's a great thing about college football. That's what I missed when I went to the NFL. When there's a foul called or a holding call mm, or personal foul. I know where you're going. They don't call the number out. Yeah. So you can always yeah. go to the sidelines and the coach asks who, who it was. No, it wasn't me, coach. It was him. Yeah. Not me. It's the other guy. It's always the other guy. They'll look at it on tape, though. They'll find you eventually. But you can get away with it until Monday. You're getting so much insight into how you fought as a player. On second and 21, Rod Rutherford, the intended receiver, passed just off to the side, incomplete. It'll be third and long with the clock stopped. 322 remaining now in the first quarter. For Rod Rutherford, this is just a concentration play. He has to concentrate on the ball, but what a tremendous athlete. 13 quarterback, backup wide receiver, returns kicks. He's really the triple threat for this offense, just a redshirt freshman, and there's a lot of great promise for his future. Very big, physical, 6'3", 215 pounds. And what a great future for Antonio Bryant, who has come back onto the field. Able to shake it off. Slay the motion man on third and 21, and Priestley cannot keep his footing. Goes down to the turf as he tries to release from the line of scrimmage. And I can tell you exactly what happens. The offensive lineman try to get set. David Priestley gets his foot stepped on. See him going back? Mm. The offensive lineman get driven back, and they step on the quarterback's feet. Brian Anderson, the right guard. And for the quarterback, he has to get out of there. Keep an eye. Right there, he's got to get out of the way. He just gets his foot stepped on by the right guard, Brian Anderson, and the center, Chad Reed. He got a twofer on that. Mm. Now let's keep an eye on these snaps. It's been a problem for Pittsburgh so far. Jonathan Sitter. This one looked better, and Lee just gets it off. Does take a Pittsburgh roll, and Brown is forced to let it roll. Wow. That could have been excellent field position for West Virginia, defending it on the bounce. But it turns out to be 53 yards. Most of the damage done on the roll. I'll take a look at our Aflac trivia question. And today we ask you which West Virginia running back has rushed for the most yards in a backyard brawl. We'll have the answer coming up a little bit later on. Well, you said you played in four of them. Yes. Four victories for the Pittsburgh Panthers. Yes. Any memories specifically? Oh, yes. We closed Mountaineer Field in 1979. They had to bring out the National Guard to get us to the game. And we won the game, and they had to bring out more National Guard on horseback to get us out. It was that heated. Oh, it's a heated round. One of the best ever, but it's a lot of fun, something you never forget. 236 left in the first. On the kid, Colbert had the big run earlier, slipping through the hole and crossing the 30-yard line for a gain of nine. You know, this Pittsburgh defense did an outstanding job last week holding Temple to just 12 yards rushing, 182 total yards. Second shutout of the season for the Pittsburgh Panthers. They actually shut out Penn State 12 to nothing back on September the 16th. Now a second and one upcoming. That's new defensive coordinator Ray Rhodes, his first year here. And the players love him. He builds excitement for the defense. He high fives guys on the sidelines. He keeps them pumped up. Only 33 years old. He's done a heck of a job. This team. On a pitch for Coburn again, and he's got the first down. Walt Harris has made it a point to really 
rave about Paul Rhodes, the defensive coordinator, and the job that he's done so far this season. It's a young defense. They feel like they'll be even better next year with sophomores and juniors gaining more experience. Nine as starters. They only have one starting senior on defense. That's defensive tackle Mike White. But, you know, he tells everybody, all I want you to do is stop the run. What they've been able to do last year, they, have, they gave up 142.8 yards a game. This year, they're below 105 yards a game. So that's a major improvement on the defensive line. Lance Nemo has stepped in at left tackle, taking Matt Wilson's spot. Out of the shotgun, it's a handoff for Coburn. He's got some room. Coburn angling to the sideline, and he's forced out of bounds just shy of the 46-yard line. Nemo with the block, and that's a gain of eight. West Virginia could not run the football early on. As this first quarter has progressed, the Mountaineers have gotten into some kind of flow with the running game. And they've been very patient with the run, and Avon Coburn's done an outstanding job of staying with it, breaking off a big run. Right here, eight rushes, 71 yards. So far, he's had a pretty good game, but what he's been able to do is read his blockers. Stay patient up front. If it's not there to the right, cut it back to the left, but he's following the flow of his blockers, and that's smart. He missed the Miami and Idaho games earlier this season because of the ankle injury that I mentioned earlier. Now a second and two. Coburn with hours in front of him. Play action. Lewis, good protection. Antonio Brown is forced down at the 32-yard line. Mark Conco with the stop. And all it is is a deep slant. No one's on him. He's going to come across the formation. There's no one taking him. You can't allow this much separation between wide receiver and cornerback. No one's around him. And if you're that open, you got to get him the ball. They cleared it out on the left side. And what had happened was they had three or two receivers on the left side of the offensive formation. They ran him down deep. One on one on the back side for Antonio Brown. A lot of room, a lot of green area. The Panther defense has to get closer if they want to stop that. But if I'm West Virginia, I go right back to a play like that until they stop. 22 yards through the air, and now a first and 10 at the 32. One minute left in the first, and Lewis wants a timeout. Pittsburgh with a 7-0 lead on West Virginia. Mountaineers still have two timeouts remaining. Pittsburgh with two as well. Nine for Brad Lewis. Here's a young quarterback that's been injured this week. Injured knees, been injured the last couple of weeks. Injured left hand, mm -hmm. injured throwing hand also. Both hands have been injured. Also should talk about what's at stake here for these two schools. Both feel that with a win, the Gator Bowl is a possibility. Music City Bowl has been mentioned. Inside.com Bowl has also been mentioned. But at six and four and similar schedules, the winner here will emerge, and uh, the team that falls short may be left out in the cold come bowl time. Absolutely. That's how big this game is, not only because it's the backyard brawl, a rivalry game, Don Nealon's last game, but also there's a lot of money at stake going to the bigger bowl game, and, and one, even with six wins, they still have a shot for a bowl. But obviously they would rather get that seventh win to lock it up. Should also mention numerous reports now swirling that Rich Rodriguez the offensive coordinator for Clemson, who played defensive back here at West Virginia between 1982 and 1984, has been mentioned as the probable successor to Don Nealon. Rodriguez had a number of schools interested in him, North Carolina, Maryland, Missouri. But Rodriguez, with a chance to come home, play for the school that he once suited up for, apparently is going to get the job. Don Nealon hopes that he still has another game left after this one. After the timeout, a first and 10 at the 32. 59 seconds to play in the first. Pittsburgh with a 7 to nothing lead. Lewis running the offense for West Virginia. Three wide receiver look. Hand up. Colbert. And he is blanketed as he took it two yards. Ryan Gonzalez helping to make that stop along with Brian Knight. And the more I see Brian Knight, the more impressed I am with him. Everybody talks about his sacks, 10 and a half sacks, but here he is, he chases the ball down from the opposite side. Closing speed. And that's what I like about him. He has that tenacity that even if the ball is run to the opposite side, I'm going to make it. You know, in addition to the sacks, he also leads the Big East in tackles for a loss. 25 of them this year. That's a high number for a guy that's known as uh, a rushing defensive end that's supposed to go get the quarterback. That is key, and those are big plays. Coaches count those. Tackles for losses is big plays. First quarter coming to a close. On second and eight. Lewis forced to scramble. Pump fake. Throw on the run. And it's incomplete. Robinson on a corner blitz. Applying the heat in the pocket. 
and a nice job on the corner blitz by Sean Robinson of staying with the play because when he breaks down he's going to come from the blitz right here on the outside it's the corner cat and Brad Lewis just avoids him if he takes a deeper path to the quarterback it's a sack but what he does he stays with the play and puts pressure on Brad Lewis forcing him to throw the ball away. Lewis, the number two quarterback last year, Mark Bolger, the starter for West Virginia, and Bolger had his way with his Pittsburgh defense. So far, Lewis, four of ten, throwing the football 60 yards, and now facing a third and eight. 11 seconds to play in the opening quarter. Out of the shotgun, Lewis fires. Yeah, too low for Braxton. Incomplete. And the Pittsburgh defense has done its job once again. Torrey Cox had the coverage over the middle. And what the Panther defense did, they went one-on-one -on, -one on the outside, and they blitzed everybody on the inside. The ball's thrown behind his wide receiver, and Phil Braxton, the quarterback, Brad Lewis, did not have a chance on this play. He read the blitz was coming. It's supposed to be a quick break off. Get it to your receiver. He just didn't have enough time to complete the pass. They will try a 48-yard field goal with John Oliger. His long this year has been 50. From the left hash. Oh, 48 yards away. It's blocked. Pittsburgh blocks it. And West Virginia hoping to put some points on the board before the end of the first quarter. They will fall short. One second remaining on the clock. This is a game about emotion, and right now, the Pittsburgh Panthers control the emotion. Right up the middle, it's a nice job by Mark Ponko, his fourth career block at the University of Pittsburgh. He was a special teams MVP as a freshman, but takes a great route to get to the kicker, and you slice in between one to the outside, which is Torrey Cox and the end man on the line of scrimmage, and one to the inside, Ponko, and takes a tremendous path and gets up exactly where you have to be. You don't go at the kicker, you go where the ball's going to be kicked. Well, this is an Aflac trivia, but I'll ask you, do you know who Mark Ponko's cousin is? Yes, I do, but I'm not saying. Well, no, you could tell us. You I can tell you now. Russ Grimm, Washington Redskins offensive line coach, four-time Pro Bowler, and also played myself at the University of Pittsburgh on the offensive line. One second left in the first. This will be the final play of the quarter. And flags come down. David Priestley trying to get back into the pocket and throw it. Prior to the snap, delay of game, offense, five-yard penalty, remains first down. Didn't get the snap in time. Now they'll back it up. Still that one second remaining on the clock. Walt Harris, great offensive mind and a great resume as well. Harris, head coach at Pacific, his alma mater. He's been an assistant in the NFL with the Jets, assistant with Ohio State, Tennessee, Illinois, Michigan State, Air Force, California. Quite a path to get to this point. Priestley's throw too high for Latif Grimm, and that is the final play of the first quarter. We'll come back to Three Rivers Stadium with Pittsburgh leading West Virginia 7 to nothing after this message and a word from your local station. People put off till tomorrow the things they should do today. It's easy, right? Anthony Padilla, AXA Advisors. Especially when it comes to a financial plan. I work with a lot of people my age. They say, Anthony, I'm young. What's the rush? AXA Advisors is one-on-one -on -one financial help. I say, start now. Sure, you've got a lot of expenses, but you've got this huge advantage, too, and that's time. Hey, I know it isn't easy, but my job is to get you started. AXA Advisors, building futures. Introducing the all-new Silverado Heavy Duty. The most powerful heavy-duty pickup you can get. Silverado Heavy Duty. More truck from Chevy. CSI, tonight on CBS. It's all here. Know what? You've made Nissan a winner. And here's how we're saying thanks with a thank you lease of $339 a month on a new 2001 Nissan Maxima SE. Maxima has what may be the best V6 engine ever, according to Ward's Auto World. And it's the number one selling V6 sedan in New York. Now some big news on even bigger savings. Get $2,900 in total savings on a new 2001 Ultima GXE. Go with a winner. Nissan. Driven. Ends November 30th. 
To put together a big deal, you need vision and resources. Not enough of one or the other, and the deal falls through. Too much of both, that's just about perfect. Fleet commercial and corporate banking. Cash management, credit solutions, global expertise. Together we're moving forward, always thinking. Fleet. Get a new Ford Focus starting at 12615 with 59 financing at your Tri-State Quality Ford store. For the latest on the battle for the White House, stay with the CBS2 Information Network. Welcome back to Home Depot College Football here on CBS. Start of the second quarter. Pittsburgh leading West Virginia 7 to nothing. Ian Eagle, Mark May, Dwayne Ballin, our entire CBS crew. Hope you had a great Thanksgiving. And the backyard brawl, 93rd edition for you. As you get your holiday weekend kicked off. Play action. Priestley looking to throw. Steps up in the pocket. Fires it up the field. And caught by Bryant. Spun down as he crosses the 30 by Rick Sherrod. Smile on the face of David Priestley. He put that ball exactly where it had to be. This is one of those plays that's drawn up on the sideline because David Priestley, after his reaction, smiles. Here he steps up in the pocket. The rush goes up. There's a hole in the middle. Step up and throw the ball. But an outstanding job of Antonio Bryan staying with the deep post pattern, staying in the middle of the field, avoiding the cornerback on the outside and not getting touched where he can stay with his route. He wasn't disrupt on his route. He just produces numbers. Three catches, 83 yards after that 45-yard reception. And no sign of the injury that he had to shake off when he walked to the sideline early on the game. Barlow trying to stay on his feet after a gain of two. Sean Hackett combining with David Carter to make that stop. Let's wrap up our trivia question. Aflac trivia, which West Virginia running back has rushed for the most yards in a backyard brawl? And the answer, Avon Coburn, 210 yards in last year's meeting. Also had three touchdowns. The way he's rushing today, he's having a pretty good day this afternoon. We're just at the beginning of the second quarter. He has over 70 yards. Now a second and eight. At the 27. Bryant in motion. Hand it off. Bryant on the reverse. Looking to throw it now. Flag down. And Rutherford is brought down at the 34. Corey McIntyre sniffed that one out. As mentioned earlier, Rutherford is listed as the third quarterback and a the guy they'd like to develop. And they put him in so many different spots on the field. But a flag on the play. And that play did not fool West Virginia in their defense one bit. They were all over that play. As soon as Rod Rutherford moved, they smelled it. Illegal formation on the offense. The penalty is declined. Third down. Dennis Hennigan telling us about the illegal formation turned down by West Virginia because of the big loss on the play and now a third and 14 coming up. Keep an eye on West Virginia's defense. They get great penetration with the defenders up front. Chris Edmonds trailing the ball down but right here there are no receivers open on the play and Rod Rutherford has nowhere to go. That's great pursuit on the defense and staying with the ball and not being fooled down the field in the defensive second. Three receivers set it's Slade in the slot. And here's Priestley on third and 14 in the pocket. Priestley stands tall, fires, and complete, turning it upfield. And finally brought down is Chris Wilson. The tight end, who is a threat, has two touchdown receptions this season. 28 yards and a first down for Pittsburgh. The Panthers use their tight ends a lot in the red area, but outside of that, they don't use them that often. It's only the seventh reception by Chris Wilson today. And on the outside, we're seeing Antonio Bryant at the end of the play. It's not his ball, so he gets a block. That's helping your teammates. Even though you're a big star on this offense, still just a sophomore, he's smart enough to realize, help your teammates. If I don't get the ball, someone else does, let's go get a block. First and goal just outside of the five. Priestley on a long count, wants to throw it. He does, too high for Bryant. 
incomplete. It'll be second and goal. Lance Frazier had the coverage in the end zone. And the matchup on the outside that they really want is Antonio Bryant at six foot two versus Lance Frazier at five nine. And they want to make it a jump ball situation, but here the ball's thrown one too hard, too high, too fast for Antonio Bryant to come down. Bryant was open, would have been six. If Priestley could have gotten it to him. Now a second and goal. Pittsburgh already in front. Hand off. Barlow running into a crowd. Kevin Barlow. And no gain on the play. Barlow brought down by David Upchurch along with Sean Hackett. And the clock now rolling with 12.34 left in the first half. Pittsburgh already leading at 7 to nothing. Here's Kevin Barlow, but keep an eye on 10 Sean Hackett. Huge hit right there, one on one. That's a heck of a hit by Hackett. Two of the best safeties in Big East Conference, Rick Sherrod and Sean Hackett. They've got a competition between each other to see who gets the biggest hit in the game. And if somebody's just tuning in saying, why are they calling him Keevan? He told us the real pronunciation is Keevan, not Kevin. On third and goal, Priestley up in the air and too high for Bryant. Flat down. Lance Frazier, the matchup that you talked about, Mark. And Frazier just trying to keep up with Bryant. Two flags on the play. And Antonio Bryant's just too fast, very long arms. And it's not fair for Lance Frazier one on one. You've got a double team and Antonio Bryant when you get in this situation. You can't leave him out there on an island. Pass interference on the defense in the end zone. By rule, the ball will be placed at the two yard line. First down. Two Florida natives going head to head Bryant from Miami and Frazier from Delray Beach. And one on one on the outside. Nice move on the inside by, Fra huh. by, by Bryant to go inside, but then planting and coming back. And there's no way in the world you can cover that. If you're that small and you're against a wide receiver with the long arms, and I keep mentioning the length of the arms because it's important to come down with the ball. Change it, Carmen. Rod Rutherford on first and goal. Hand it off. Touchdown, Barlow. Keevan Barlow, second score of the day. And Pittsburgh is an extra point away from taking the 14 to nothing lead. Tim Stein, Sitter will snap it. Lott puts it through, an eight play, 69 yard drive, taking up just under three minutes. Pittsburgh, final ever college football game to be played at Three Rivers. And the hometown Panthers lead it 14 to nothing over West Virginia. Can we get another one, please? <laughs> okay, okay, let's do this again. Okay. One more time. Yeah. This holiday season, Miller Lite wishes you safe and happy Miller times. It has the DNA of giants in its sheet metal. Cars that raced on fields of honor. It has motor oil for blood and a 250 horsepower heart. Because 50 years ago, like today, there were just two kinds of cars on the road. Those that pass, and those that get past. Chrysler 300M, the most powerful V6 sports sedan in its class. Now, during the Chrysler holiday sale, lease the 300M for $369 a month. At Zales, this Saturday and Sunday only, these dazzling 499 3 quarter carat diamond earrings are now just $299. At Zales stores nationwide or shop online at zales.com. Still getting dandruff flakes? Maybe the problem is your dandruff shampoo. Try Neutrogena T-Gel Intensive Anti-Flake Shampoo. Fights flakes three ways. It may not be your first dandruff shampoo. It will be your last. Neutrogena T-Gel, it works. What makes love last? Sacrifice. Sacrifice. Sex. It's a mystery for Lydia to solve. I am not going to be alone. All new That's Life, CBS Saturday. 
Pittsburgh has not beaten West Virginia at home since 1986. In fact, West Virginia is riding a, an impressive streak. Seven of the last eight Mountaineers have knocked off the Panthers, but Antonio Bryant and the rest of his teammates have something else on their mind here today with a chance to possibly qualify for a major bowl. A 14 to nothing Pittsburgh lead. Locks on the kickoff. This is Terry from the 12. Terry coming into the outside, long strides, and he's forced out of bounds just short of the 30-yard line. Test your sports knowledge. Play AFLAC trivia at cbs.sportsline.com or America Online keyword CBS Sportsline. West Virginia football, first and 10 at their own 30-yard line. Three River Stadium is the site. For the Backyard Brawl, 93rd edition. First meeting back in 1895. Walt Harris winding down into school year as the head coach of the Panthers. Three wide receivers set for West Virginia. Still no points to show for their effort. On the toss to Colbert, and he strung to the outside, could not get to the line of scrimmage. Joe Conlon cutting off the angle. It's a loss of one. I am Brad Nell, the right guard. The West Virginia Mountaineers gave this play away. If you're an offensive lineman and you're pulling, you try to cheat back off the line of scrimmage a little bit to get out. Well, he was back about a foot farther than anyone else. So the defense, they're close to the line of scrimmage. You point to that guy and follow him. As soon as he pulls, defense goes through that vacuum. They make a good play on defense. Now Brad Nell on the academic all-star team of the Big East. It's offensive lineman. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Uh, we'll get into that. Second and 11. Wes Hours had a opinion or two on the offensive lineman. He used to play the position. Out of the shotgun on second and 11. Low throw. It's caught by Antonio Brown. And he's brought down quickly after a gain of three and a half. Let's go downstairs to Dwayne Ballant. Ian, this is supposed to be a very emotional game. We talked about it, the backyard brawl. This is Coach Nealon's final regular season game. It's the second quarter, just down 14-0. But the West Virginia Mountaineers on their bench, these players are quiet, not talking to each other, not saying really anything. This is a huge rivalry. It's rather amazing that they have that comportment right now. Ian? Well, Nealon told us, Dwayne, that the emotion angle doesn't really work once you get into the course of the game unless you start producing. And then you can play off the emotion, maybe feed off it. Right now, down 14 to nothing and facing a third and seven. It's going to be an uphill climb for West Virginia. Lewis, side on throw, and it's caught by Terry. Just short of midfield, and maybe that could be the boost that this West Virginia offense was looking for. A 16-yard pass and catch. Tremendous job by the offensive lineman up front of blocking for the quarterback, Brad Lewis. But a great route by Sean Terry. Look at the protection. No one's even close to the quarterback, Brad Lewis. He has time to read his routes, find his receiver, step up, and put a little mustard on the ball to get it to his wide receiver, Sean Terry. Matt Wilson, the normal starter at left tackle, is now in at right tackle, replacing Tanner Russell. And as mentioned earlier, Lance Nemo has stepped in to play left tackle on a first and 10. Line of scrimmage just short of the 50. Toss to the outside. Antonio Brown is brought down quickly. Torrey Cox was all over that play. Talk about smelling out a play. Torrey Cox read this play as soon as it left Brad Lewis's hands. Right at the top, keep an eye right here. You're going to see him. He's looking at the quarterback. Look at his eyes. He's looking at the quarterback. He sees the play. Set right between two of them, and he just comes in and sacrifices his body and makes the play. Well, Antonio Brown unable to get up. Second man. Brown is a junior from Miami, Florida. West Virginia at their own 48. Having a solid season, 36 catches, 630 yards coming into the game. Also 21 carries for 126 yards. The versatile threat is now on his back here at Three Rivers. We'll step aside for a moment. The Fugitive, tonight on CBS. It's all here. Your Toyota dealers hope you have lots to be thankful for this Thanksgiving. In fact, they have something for you to be thankful for. 2.9% APR financing for two years on Toyota's most popular cars and trucks. 2.9%. And get this, you won't have any payments for 90 days. That's like some serious extra holiday cash. 2.9, no payments for 90 days. So forget them all this Thanksgiving weekend. Get to your Toyota dealer. You'll be thankful you did.
kickoff with Bill Zim, Sunday morning at 11.30 on CBS2. Fourteen to nothing, Pittsburgh leading West Virginia. 10-15 to play in the first half. Antonio Brown was able to walk off the field on his own power. And West Virginia going with a two wideout set, both to the right of the formation. Pittsburgh showing blitz. Lewis throwing into some traffic, and the connection made to Sean Terry into Pittsburgh territory and brought down. As he got out across the 45-yard line to the 44, Torrey Cox had the coverage. And this is a great job by Brad Lewis of reading the defense. Eight men on the line of scrimmage for the Pittsburgh Panthers. All eight of them right on the line of scrimmage. He knows it's a blitz, but he and his wide receiver, they read the blitz, and it's a quick break off right over the middle. That's cooperation between quarterback and wide receiver being on the same. And Antonio Brown has returned, so both Antonios had some minor injuries that they were able to come back from. But it's the backyard brawl. You have to sacrifice in a big game. And a third and four now. Crucial third down here in the second quarter. Did they get the playoff in time? Lewis throwing. Too high. Phil Braxton, the intended target. Play clock had hit zero just as the ball was snapped. That's Paul Rhodes, defensive coordinator. He's happy with his defense. What he wants to do is create confusion. Put seven, eight, nine men in the box, blitz as many as he can, draw the attention of the quarterback to let him know every time he throws the ball, he's going to get hit with somebody. Or somebody's going to have their hands in his face. But he wants to cause disruption and confusion with his front seven. Mark Fazolari will put it. And Bryant, the fair catch. Brings it in cleanly just outside of the 14 yard line. Coming up tonight on CBS, Dr. Richard Kimball is being hunted by a hired killer in the most riveting episode ever. If you haven't seen it, you haven't experienced the all new fugitive tonight, right here on CBS. Now, the backyard brawl. Don Nealon, when we asked him about any specific memories he had against. This Pittsburgh team, he reeled off about 15 of them. <laughs> he, and quite clear. Chapter and verse. It was fourth and three. This is what they did. This is what we did. We split them out. It was the end of the game. And, you know, it's incredible how important these games are because, one, for recruiting. Mm. You know, you're recruiting in Pennsylvania and West Virginia. You want to get the best players. It's important to win this game. On a first down, Barlow trying to emerge through a hole. He carries some tacklers with him. And Barlow crosses the 15-yard line. Rick Sherrod making the stop. That's a gain of five. Now Don Nealon, 21 seasons at West Virginia, trailing just three other coaches for consecutive years of service at the same school. Paterno at Penn State, Lavelle Edwards, who's retiring at BYU. Bobby Bowden, former head coach of the West Virginia Mountaineers. Had some speculation that maybe Terry Bowden would be interested in the job of former Mountaineer, but Bowden begged off, might be waiting for the Florida State job to open up once his dad decides to call it quits. On the draw play, Barlow, little shake and break move, and Barlow has a first down. Out to the 28-yard line, James Davis there to drag him down by the jersey. This is the difference between good running backs and great running backs. Watch the move by Keevan Barlow. He's going to take the handoff. He's going to stop right there, change his direction, go to the outside, then turn his shoulders up and get positive yardage and the first down. He made three or four moves on the play, and then he doesn't go down with the first tackler. Drags West Virginia Mountaineers defenders down the field to play. This is not a good running back. This is a heck of a running back, and he's going to have a heck of a future at the next level. Out of Peabody High School, he's been a contributor since day one in a Panther uniform. On first and ten to the 28, Barlow stutters to finds a lane, and he's very close to the marker. That might be a new set of downs for Pittsburgh to work with as Kiawatha Downey, the sophomore right tackle, helped provide some space. And what's impressive about Keevan Barlow, he's big and he's nifty. 235 pounds, but he runs like a little scatterbug in the backfield, has tremendously quick feet, eye, hand, leg coordination, and he's a senior this year, 21 years old, obviously we see, but I like his power also. You know, one thing Barlow told us, last year he felt West Virginia rubbed it in in that blowout win. They were celebrating at the end of the game, throwing in the fourth quarter. He dancing made, dancing on the side. Absolutely. Lines. He made sure he told us that as they come up just a little bit short of the first down. And that's obviously stuck with this Pittsburgh team 
with a year gone by. And a lot of the seniors talk to the younger players on this team to let them know that you know they haven't tasted victory over the Mountaineers, and a lot of these seniors were around the, the last time that Pitt was able to defeat West Virginia. So they really don't realize how important it is. But I think it's important for the seniors, and it's carrying on the tradition and the legacy of the big football games and tradition in college football. Well, one of the seniors, John Terman, the quarterback, has been watching from the sidelines since the first series. David Priestley has stepped in, and Terman has been a spectator. On a second and one, Nick Goins has checked in. Inside handoff, Lusaka Polite. He's the fullback from Woodland Hills High School. The redshirt freshman stopped by James Davis. No gain. They needed a yard for the first down. Now, and going back to John Terman, this looks like a quarterback that he probably realizes he may not get back in. Usually, if you're into the game, you're up. You don't care about the hat on or the coating. You're staying warm and staying loose on the sidelines just in case you're going back in. And they're going to rotate quarterback series to series. But in this situation, looks like he's handed the baton to David Priestley. Both quarterbacks are California natives. I think this cold weather bottle is not that no, today, this is warm. This is nothing. You don't even need the glove. Where's the hat? <laughs> On the pitch. Barlow. First down. Barlow breaks a tackle. Keevan Barlow taking it to the sideline and forced out of bounds by Bryant. He needed a yard. He got 30. What a big day this senior is having. Big players stepping up in big games. Watch the way he's going to hit the hole. When he hits the hole, he's following his right guard, Brian Anderson, making a play right here and runs through tacklers. Then straight arms a defender. And the, and the defender he straight arms is Chris Edmonds, a great linebacker for West Virginia. Then he turns on the Jets and picks up positive yardage. The total package. This is the way he bounces off defenders. He is the total package in speed, quickness, strength, and the ability to avoid tackles. 12 carries, 126 yards. Wow. That's an average of 10. 0.5 yards per clip. 14 to nothing Pittsburgh. Six and a half to play in the second quarter. Goings is in the backfield. Priestley flagged out. Priestley looking for it all. Incomplete. Too high for Grimm. As mentioned, a flag on the play. Now Walt Harris, a mastermind offensively, right now feels that Priestley gives them the better chance to move the football. There, and Harris not thrilled with the penalty against the Panthers. And then what I really like about David Priestley at this point in his career, had shoulder surgery last year in December. Usually takes a full year to come back off that surgery. He came back a little bit early, came back in about nine and a half months. And he realized that, that he wasn't sharp. When we spoke with him, he told us, I'm finally feeling yeah. like I'm back to 100%. And it's evident today he's throwing the football magnificent. There are two penalties on the play. Illegal shift on the offense. Ineligible receiver downfield on the offense. Both penalties are declined. Second down. So they'll call it second and ten. Why decline the penalty? I'm not sure. I would have definitely accepted the penalty and put Pitt backing them up. Right now they are field yeah, in field yeah. goal range right now. You back them up. I would have definitely accepted. Hmm. Peculiar. Second and ten. Line of scrimmage is the 32. Barlow is back in there. Lake Hart winding down. Priestley gets it off in time. Priestley, good protection. To the sideline. Bryant trying to remain on his feet. He was thinking about the end zone, but he's tripped up right at the 20 yard line. That's a gain of 12 and a first down for Pittsburgh. Now Antonio Bryant has Lance Frazier exactly where he wants him. Let's check in with Dwayne Ballant. We have a tail end of two Antonios. Antonio Bryant, who just made that reception for Pittsburgh, Antonio Brown for West Virginia. Both come from Miami, nearly the same neighborhood, different high schools. They were recruited by some of the same people. As a matter of fact, recruiters confused the two at the time when they were being recruited in high school. So you can imagine it made for some interesting situations where they had the recruiters confused, not knowing who was who, but they were able to make their way to Pittsburgh and West Virginia, respectively, with their same name. On first down, Priestley intercepted by Richard Bryant, and Bryant down the sideline. Priestley was forced to come over and make the stop. And Bryant telling the crowd to quiet down. 
What a huge play for this West Virginia defense, already trailing 14 to nothing. Pittsburgh looking for more. Big play by the defense, but a poorly thrown pass by David Priestley, and a nice job of adjusting to the ball by Richard Bryant. What I like at the end of the play by David Priestley, he's smart enough to make the tackle. But Richard Bryant, that's a heck of a play of reading the quarterback, reading the ball. Now, make something happen with the football. Take it as far as you can take it, but he gets tackled by the quarterback. A 48-yard return, bringing it all the way back to the Pittsburgh 45. So West Virginia looking for some kind of momentum. This might provide the impetus. What do we want this year? JPEG of the grandkids would be nice. I want to be a cyber cowboy. I want to check out a chat room. I'm a nut for email. I want to buy my lingerie online. Me too. I want to know what is hip. This year, give your parents the gift they really want. An easy way to stay in touch right from their TV. Web TV from Microsoft. Look for our holiday offer. to spot a diehard battery owner. Look for their jumper cables. Die Hard, America's most trusted battery with 30 years of starting power. How much do you trust your battery? Shouldn't everything be this simple? Thousands of new and pre-owned cars from Autobytel.com. Low, no haggle pricing and a pre owned car guarantee. Autobytel.com. For every job, there's a hard way. Or there's the Dremel way. The Dremel rotary tool with right angle attachment. Suddenly, nothing seems out of reach. For every problem, there's a Dremel solution. Tim Brando in New York. Coming up on the AXA Halftime Report, Spencer Tillman and I will get you caught up on all of today's scores and highlights, plus the special story of Penn State freshman Adam Talapero, who's making a strong recovery from a spinal injury suffered earlier this season. Now, back to your game. Richard Bryan, his first year as a starter at cornerback, and his fourth interception. On the throw, first down, Corey Ivey, the intended receiver. Shante Spencer had the coverage. So West Virginia was looking to strike quickly after the turnover. And a nice play by Shante Spencer, but here's Corey Ivey. The ball has to be led more. Brad Lewis has to throw this ball deeper when your receivers have to stop and come back and just to the ball, and it gives the defender a time right here when he's got to stop and come back to the ball. The ball is just not thrown deep enough. Corey Ivey, a terrific story. He was granted another year of eligibility by the NCAA. Was originally scheduled to attend Tennessee, but the grades were not accepted. Ends up going to West Virginia, having never visited the campus. He's turned out to be one of the best receivers in the school's history. On the handoff, Coburn. And he's brought down at the 40-yard line. That's a gain of five. Joe Conlon with the stop. Again, the trickery for West Virginia trying to give the appearance that they were going to take it to the outside, and Coburn moving straight ahead. Well, for the West Virginia Mountaineers, I think the only place they've really had success this afternoon is giving the ball to Avon Colburn, and I think they need to stay with it. They shouldn't abandon the run so early in this game because he's gotten the biggest plays for their offense. They need to put the ball in the end zone before halftime to get some momentum. On a third and five, season average under 29% third down conversions. It's a number that's actually improved as the year has gone on. Out of the shotgun. Half. Here's Lewis, blitz on, Lewis in some trouble. And sacked! Back at the 46-yard line, Brian Guzik. First man there, and Lewis is slow to get up. Brian Guzik, the strong side linebacker, that's the defensive coordinator, Paul Rhodes. He loves to pressure quarterbacks. He's going to come with a blitz. Keep an eye on Avon Colburn. He's going to go across the formation and go to the backside. That leaves the right tackle. One-on-one, -on -one, Matt Wilson over Brian Goosen and watch the reaction on the sidelines. He's pumped up. He wants to keep his players pumped up. That's the attitude you got to have in college football. Keep them juiced. Conlon finished off Lewis. The punt from Fazolari. There's Brian. Flat down. Brian. Comes through a hole. Brian on his feet. Antonio Bryant cutting it back. And he's brought down to the 30. 
Sean Swindoll making the stop. A 50-yard return, but is this one coming back? The flag is at the 20-yard line. And I can tell you one thing, regardless if it comes back or not, we're seeing one of the premier athletes. The opportunity to catch a kick on the kicking team. And it stands. has everything. He's got the size, he's got the speed, and now he's a tremendous return man. And watch, he's going to follow his blockers, follows him to the right, plants, sees the crease, runs through a tackler. Now, it's up to me to make something happen. He's got blockers out in front, running through tacklers. This is a huge play. Here, I think he should stay to his angle, keep to his right, try to outrun the coverage, but he stops and cuts back, and the tackle's made at the end of the play. What an outstanding job of following your blockers, setting up your blockers, taking the ball laterally to your right, letting your blockers on the team, get their blocks and fits, and then playing and turning and taking the ball. Rutherford, the motion man on a first and 10 from the 30. Handoff, Barlow, hit behind the line of scrimmage. And a good play by Kyle Caden. Great instincts, the middle linebacker for West Virginia. And Kyle Caden's a heck of a story. Here's a guy that started virtually every game since he stepped on campus. He's only the third junior to be voted team captain in the 21 years Don Nealon has been the head coach of West Virginia. And he's a tremendous leader on the field. He's not a vocal leader. He splits a lot of the time with Corey McIntyre. But he's a leader on the field, and the players listen to him. He gets them lined up, calls the plays for the defense, and he always contributes and makes big plays for the Mountaineer defense. A loss of three coming up on three minutes to play in the first half. In motion, Wilson. There's Priestley stepping up in the pocket, throwing in a sliding grab made by Slade. That's a first down now for Pittsburgh. And they are in the red zone, just short of the 18. And Lamar Slade, we were watching his brother, Chris Slade, yesterday for the New England Patriots, watching Phil Simms and the crew call that game. And that's his younger brother out there at wide receiver. Well, Slade is the tallest receiver on the team at six foot four out of Yorktown, Virginia, Fork Union Military Academy. It always amazes me. You get the tall receivers at six four that can jump, and the quarterbacks throw the ball down by their shoes. <laughs> On a first and ten, line of scrimmage is the 18. Priestley steps up and throws, and that one's low for Grimm. 2.42 now remaining in the first half. And a flag on the play. Now against West Virginia, things sliding away. You figured after that turnover, maybe the Mountaineers could take advantage. Rushing the passer on the defense. Penalty is half the distance to the goal. First down. So Pittsburgh, which already had good field position, will move it up a notch. And this is a long wait. There it is. That's an awful long wait. Looked like Tim Love, the defensive tackle. That's one of those situations, I guess, if you're going to get a personal foul, you're going to get a personal foul. Now the first and goal now for Pittsburgh. Just inside the 10. Barlow in the backfield, but Priestley will throw it to the end zone. Leaping attempt by Bryant, juggled and dropped. Lance Frazier the coverage. They continue to try to take advantage of that matchup, the height disparity between the two. They've done a pretty good job of it the entire afternoon, but I still think they need to throw the ball to the Chief Grimm to average it out and to spread the offense out. And you know, here's a wide receiver that had over 1,100 yards receiving last year and set the University of Pittsburgh record in receiving, but that's an outstanding effort by Antonio Bryan on the ball. And, and Latif Grimm only has one catch today for four yards, and, and what you do is if you can spread it around and go to Latif Grimm, then you go back to Antonio Bryant. You lull him to sleep a little bit and set him up. Second and goal inside the 10. Empty backfield. Priestley hit as he throws and knocked down. Grant Wiley was the man that came firing in, the linebacker, who's been playing like a veteran this season despite being a redshirt freshman. And Don Nealon made a point in our chat with him to say that Wiley has been one of the biggest surprises on the team. And, and that was strange because he's a redshirt freshman, and here's a, a defense that's led by Chris Edmonds, Kyle Caden. Those are the linebackers you hear about. And, and that was the first statement that he told us that Grant Wiley Biggest surprise, he's a big time player for this defense and he seems to come up with big plays when the Mountaineers defense needed. 
came in with 80 tackles on the season, three interceptions, two have gone back for touchdowns. On third and goal, Pittsburgh looking to add to its lead. Priestley in the pocket, steps up and throws to the corner. And incomplete, another flag. Lamar Slade, the intended receiver. Lamar Slade, there's a flag on the Down to 229, now left in the second quarter. Mm. Offside to West Virginia. Well, the Mountaineers stopping Pittsburgh on third and goal, and now the penalty. Offsides on the defense. Penalty is half the distance to the goal. Repeat third down. So Pittsburgh will get another crack at it. Don Nealon's offense has been quiet for the most part. Defense has been asked to do a lot because Pittsburgh's offense has been on the field quite a bit. And that usually wears your defense down, and Don Nealon needs to go back to the run offensively. And I said this earlier because you really can't abandon the run that early, particularly on first down when you have an established running back that, one, is hyped up for the game because he had a career high against the Pittsburgh Panthers last year in this match. On third and goal, slay the motion man. Priestley with a long count. Priestley wants to throw it a flip. And intercepted. Picked up by Upchurch. Big David Upchurch is brought down at the 25-yard line. He played some tight end in high school. And I'll tell you what, David Upchurch thought he had a quarter pounder in front of him. Because he saw that big ball and was like, whoo, give it to me. I'm going to take it. And the thing about it, he's going to avoid tacklers and he's going to run over some tacklers. But here's David Upchurch, going to have his hands up. There's the ball. Give it to me. It's some food. Get it. Hold on to it. Now watch this. He's going to run through, stiff arm, go down the field to play. Look at the big eyes. That's a big play by a big man. And the second Pittsburgh turnover deep in West Virginia territory. 14 to nothing Pitt, but West Virginia gets the football back. You could grab an off-the-shelf computer for someone you love this holiday, or give them a computer that's built uniquely for them. A truly personal computer that's been turned into a music machine, or movie theater, or photo gallery with training classes so they can get the most out of it. We think you can spot the better gift. Start with a fully loaded Gateway PC for less than $23 a month, including a year of America Online. Call 1-800-GATEWAY, where people rule. frequency makes no sense. They were going to knock you in the mouth. Sundays on CBS. Now don't forget coming up the AXA halftime report. Tim Brando and Spencer Tillman all the scores and highlights plus they'll share with you the special story of Penn State's Adam Talaferro making a terrific recovery from a spinal injury. That's all coming up on the AXA halftime report. Scott McBrien in at quarterback and handing the ball off to Avon Coburn. It's a gain of two. Well, Brad Lewis, the starter, has not been effective, at least in the eyes of Don Nealon and the coaching staff for West Virginia. So Scott McBrien, a freshman, a lefty, gets the opportunity. He came in against Notre Dame. He started against Syracuse. Now a second and eight with his team down by 14. Here's McBrien stepping up and throwing to the sideline and complete to Terry. Sean Terry straddling that sideline for a gain of 10, and that's enough for a first down. With well, Sean Terry, you get height, you get speed, you get intelligence. When he makes his break right here, he 
goes to the right point. You saw him stutter step, dip, make his break. That's knowing the offense. Smart player, he's a junior this year, but for the quarterback, Scott McBrien, great athlete, more mobility at the quarterback position, but obviously he doesn't have the experience of a Brad Lewis, but in order to get experience, you have to play. Native of Rockville, Maryland, out of DeMatha High School. And there may be a battle at quarterback next year for this West Virginia offense. McBrien stepping up in the pocket, fires, catch made by Ivy. Corey Ivy takes a wallop wow. from the weak side. And it was Brian Beinecke who came in late. That's another first down, and it's into Pittsburgh territory, a gain of 22. How about the protection up front for quarterback Scott McBride? And watch as he stands tall in the pocket, he just launches his ball. I mean, he zips the ball. That's confidence in your receiver, one, Corey Ivey, of getting to the point where you want to throw the ball, and two, confidence in yourself of throwing that ball in the direction of two pit defenders. First and 10, line of scrimmage, just shy of the 40-yard line. Out of the shotgun, McBride. Here comes the blitz. Throws, and incomplete. Tripped up. And a flag comes down. Phil Braxton. And he got tied up with Shante Spencer. And with a minute 19 left, looks like West Virginia is going to move the football after the penalty. Pass interference against Spencer on the trip. Chalte Spencer's probably scratching his head because Phil Braxton trips and stumbles. He puts his hands on him and he just can't stop. But this is a pretty good call down the field. There he plants. He stumbles by himself and he virtually runs into him. Yeah. Pass interference on the defense. 15 yard penalty for the line of scrimmage. First down. Appeared to be incidental contact, if anything, as he made his cut to the sideline. But West Virginia will take it and they'll move the ball to the 25. And what a spark quarterback Scott McBride's added to the offense. Just coming down the field, different look in the huddle for the players, and they've responded. West Virginia in the second quarter, not much offense with Brad Lewis operating. And now it's McBride getting an opportunity with 119 to play first half. 14 to nothing, Pittsburgh. McBride out of the shotgun on a first and 10 from the 25. Again, Pittsburgh crowds the line of scrimmage. McBride unloads deep. Too high. Antonio Brown, the target. He was matched up with Torrey Cox. One thing about Scott McBride, he's not going to be intimidated by the blitz of Pittsburgh Panthers. He sees the blitz, he's going to step up and get rid of the ball. That's smart for a young quarterback to do right off the bat. Don't take the sack, mm. don't try to force it. If it's not there, just throw the ball and hope your wide receivers, which have more experience than you, will make the play on the ball. And Don Nealon left the door open when we spoke with him about the QB situation. He said there was a chance McBrien would get an opportunity. Brad Lewis has been nursing a hand injury and wondering if that has hindered his performance on a second and ten. Pittsburgh coming again. Good blocking up front. Incomplete. Phil Braxton with Spencer, and this time Spencer wins that battle. Chalte Spencer's done an outstanding job of one-on-one -on -one coverage of Phil Braxton. Here he's in the press position at the line of scrimmage. Now he puts his hands on him, gets the push, reads the ball. There's the slam. Put your hand up there. It's a nice job. Braxton is the nephew of former West Virginia great Jim Braxton. He's a physical target at six foot two, 200 pounds, a sophomore from Vanderbilt, Pennsylvania. And a timeout. West Virginia has one remaining. 113 left, first half. Walt Harris and the Pittsburgh Panthers leading Don Nealon's Mountaineers. 14 to nothing. This is not a photo, it's a digital image. And this is not a photo, it's a computer image. It's not a photo until you print it on jet print photo paper. So you print this on your inkjet printer? Whether you get images from a digital camera, scanner, photo CD, or email, jet print photo lets you print studio quality pictures at home. When you can get the look and feel of professional photos, why settle for anything less? Jet print photo, how digital photos are finished. Love last. Sacrifice. Sacrifice. Sex. It's a mystery for Lydia to solve. I am not going to be alone. All new That's Life, CBS Saturday. 
14 to nothing. Pittsburgh leading West Virginia, the Home Depot College Football here on CBS. A minute 13 to play in the second quarter. And Don Nealon's team facing a third and 10 at the Pittsburgh 25. Scott McBrien in at quarterback, the freshman. Out of the shotgun. Three receivers set. Here's McBrien. Blitz coming. Puts it up top. In the air. Juggling attempt by Braxton. Incomplete. Again, Braxton one on one with Shante Spencer. That's the big four. Shante Spencer wants to get on the line of scrimmage and press. Get your hands on him if you can. If not, run stride for stride. Looks him in the eye. A push off at the end by Braxton to try to make the catch. But that's good coverage of staying stride for stride with your man, watching the ball. When the ball touches his hand, make a break on the ball and knock it loose. And Braxton was out of bounds. This will be a 42-yard attempt for Brendan Rao. West Virginia looking for points. And they are on the board. With a minute three left in the first half, Brendan Rao with a 43-yard field goal. And it's 14 to three Pittsburgh. And what that does for the Mountaineers, one, gets confidence back in your offense. You've got a backup wide, you've got a backup quarterback coming into play. He moves the ball down before you go into halftime. You put points on the board. Well, Don Neal in his final regular season game as a head coach. Let's take you back. 1983, a Mountaineer moment in the career of Don Nealon. West Virginia led by Jeff Hostetler. They beat Pittsburgh for the first time in Nealon's career. Don't know if Don at the time knew that Haas would end up being his son-in-law as well. But West Virginia wins at 24 to 21. And that's something Don Nealon told us when he took over the job at West Virginia. First year, 1980. Everybody there said, you've got to beat Penn State and you've got to beat Pittsburgh. Don Nealon said, forget about Penn State and Pittsburgh. We have to beat the other teams, the Richmonds, the average teams that come in here and beat us, the teams we should beat, we need to beat first. But it only took him three years. And his fourth year, caught Pitt, mm -hmm. University of Pittsburgh, caught Penn State. And that was a quick turnaround for his program. At that point, he was able to recruit Western Pennsylvania and recruit with the big boys. 16 winning seasons in his 21 years at West Virginia. We'll turn 65 on New Year's Day. We asked him, what are you going to do next? He said, oh, I'm not ready for bingo. So. <laughs> He expects to uh, take up his time in his retirement. Off the bounce kick. Here's Nick Goins returning it. And he's brought down at the 34-yard line after the 12-yard return. 58 seconds left. We're in the second quarter in Pittsburgh now with a 14-3 lead on West Virginia. David Priestley has played virtually the entire first half. John Turman had the first series at quarterback for Pittsburgh. And then Priestley has come in and has directed the Panthers on some long drives. It could easily be 21, 24, 28 to 3, if not for two interceptions in the red zone. On first down, Barlow and Polite. Split in the backfield. Handoff. Barlow. And Barlow able to stay on his feet for a gain of four. Clock continues to roll. Coming up tomorrow, the Home Depot College football rocks this holiday with doubleheader action. First, it's a war between the state when Georgia Tech battles the Georgia Bulldogs. Then, Boston College takes on Miami. Intercepted. Richard Bryant with his second pick. And with 33 seconds left in the first half, West Virginia has an opportunity to cut into the Pittsburgh lead. I'll tell you what, Richard Bryant must have ESP because he knows exactly what David Priestley's doing. Whenever he throws to his side of the field, he breaks in front of the receiver and intercepts the football. Now here's a smart break on the receiver. This is doing your homework. The ball's thrown behind Latif Grimm, but still, that's a nice play by the cornerback, Richard Bryant. Third straight possession for Pittsburgh with an interception. Here's the key on it. The Pittsburgh Panthers had a chance to run the clock out. West Virginia, they were calling timeouts. They ran the ball on first down. Clock was going down. So on second down, they tried to force a big play. Costly turnover just before half. Time. Could have gone in with a 14-3 advantage. You're right. They easily could have run the clock out. 
and accepted the 11 point lead into the break. Instead West Virginia gets the football on a first and 10 at the Pittsburgh 35. And McBrien will remain in at quarterback working out of the shotgun. 33 seconds left to play first half. Pittsburgh coming on a blitz. McBrien throws. Incomplete. Corey Ivey the intended receiver. And he also had Antonio Brown wide open. He went with his first read. He's looking at the blitz. He's taking his first read and throwing the ball. If he second hesitates man, man. just a hair and looks to his second read, I think he'll come up with a big play. And I think going back to the huddle, Antonio Brown's going to say, hey, I'm wide open. Yeah, but don't receivers say that every time in the huddle? Yeah, every play. They come back to the huddle whining, I'm open, I'm open. And you see a guy with triple coverage on film the next day, and there's no <laughs> way he's open. O'Brien, I uh, should say McBrien started 2 of 2. Since then, he's 0 for his last four. Crowding the line, Pittsburgh. Trying to put some pressure on the freshman. McBrien up top. Great grab by Braxton. Oh. Phil Braxton forced out of bounds. Inside the eight. And Phil Braxton right here. Run the fade. Get on the line of scrimmage. Get off the line of scrimmage. One on one again with Shantae Spencer. Obviously, this must be a matchup they like. Shantae Spencer's been winning the battle. But this time, Phil Braxton comes up with a big play. Excellent concentration on the ball. And now a first and goal with 24 seconds left. Walt Harris had the opportunity to run out the clock. Instead, his quarterback Priestley has it picked off, leading to this for West Virginia. On first and goal, fade pattern up in the air. Antonio Brown can't bring it in cleanly. Torrey Cox there. 18 seconds now left in the second quarter. This is another timing pattern. One on one on the outside. Get your wide receiver, Antonio Brown, to beat the defender. But Corey Cox is not fooled. Torrey Cox stays with the ball, stays with the defender. And this is a ball that should really be caught by Antonio Brown. He had his hands on it. It was good close coverage, but he gets both hands on the football. Just can't bring it in. Brown only one receiving touchdown this season. Corey Ivey has four to lead the receiving group for West Virginia. Now a second and goal. McBrien on the toss. Colburn turns it upfield, and Colburn comes up shy of the five. West Virginia still has one timeout left, and they'll use it right here with 12 seconds left in the first half. Gerald Hayes with a stop. And I'll tell you one thing. Gerald Hayes just won the battle of little man versus big man. Linebacker Gerald Hayes, 235 pounds, went head-to-head -head with 290-pound fullback. Wes Harris just threw him to the side made the tackle. That's a great job of leverage of getting under a big man. Gives us a moment to tell you about Wes Howers, number 40. He's had a number of changes in uniforms over the years because he's changed roles through the years. He's been all over the place. Defensive tackle, offensive guard, back to fullback again. But he said he loves the limelight that everyone, they're finally noticing. Mm -hmm. But he grew up actually loving linebackers. Wow, I think he loves burgers. That's a big man. And the thing about it is, he's bigger than any Pittsburgh Panther defensive starter at the fullback position. Yeah, we asked Brian Knight about the matchup with ours. He said it's going to be an ibuprofen day. <laughs> How many guys actually use the word ibuprofen? And in college. That's just amazing, a big man like that. And the thing about him, he's very nifty. He catch the ball out of the backfield. Tremendous blocker. When we talked to him, he said, hey, playing the offensive line, that was the major improvement in my football game all around because it helped me understand you know what? defense. And I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you. Yep. With 12 seconds left, second quarter. Let it be noted, Wes Hours did say that offensive linemen are the smartest guys in football. Thank you. He After got, you urged it out of him. He got my telegram from the day before. Yeah. He was ready. It took some coaxing, but you got it out of him. Now Don Nealon's team trailing 14 to 3. 12 seconds to play. First half on a third and goal from the six. Harris could have had the cushy 11 point lead. Final seconds, first half. A throw into traffic, and Antonio Brown gets smashed. Ramon Walker able to combine to make that hit. It's incomplete. From the defensive safety position, if anybody comes across the middle, you want to make them pay, particularly a wide receiver, to let them know that that's your territory. That's exactly what Ramon Walker does. Big hitter. Has 12 double-digit games and only 17 starts at the safety position. And Teron Gray also collaborating 
on that smack. A 23-yard field goal attempt. And a bad snap. Ball scooped up. And a touchdown saving tackle made. Walt Harris's club will go into the locker room with a 14-3 lead, the unconventional way. And this should be easy points, and the ball snapped behind the holder, and it's high. And he can't come down with it. But a nice job of hustling on defense by the Pittsburgh Panthers and Torrey Cox. Here the ball snapped behind. Usually if it's in front of him or too wide, it's out in front of him or over his head, but not behind the holder. Steve Terleski came in as the snapper, and Brendan Rao, the kicker, just saved his team seven points. Don Nealon takes a lot of pride in his special teams, and he's upset at that point. Three seconds remaining on the clock. Pittsburgh has one timeout left. West Virginia with no timeouts remaining. And now John Terman back in at quarterback. So we did not see the last of Terman. A smile on the senior's face out of Walnut Creek, California. Las Lomas High School. Well, Harris is a California guy as well. Went to El Camino High School in San Francisco, California. When he was coaching at Pacific, do you know who his first recruit was? This one's going to be hard to believe. I do. Well, I told you yesterday. <laughs> Pete Carroll, former head coach of the Jets and the New England Patriots, and Pete's son. Brennan Carroll plays tight end on this Pittsburgh offense. Uh, but it's hard to look at him and say 54 years old. That's incredible. He does not even look close to being 54. No, he looks 45, 46. Yeah. Now Pittsburgh does the wise thing, taking a knee. So Pittsburgh will go into the locker room with a 14-3 lead over the West Virginia Mountaineers in the 93rd edition of the Backyard Brawl. Two touchdown runs for Keevan Barlow. And right now, let's go down to Dwayne Ballant. Coach Harris, you had the control of the game for most of the first half. Last five minutes, things got very interesting. Yeah, we turned it over, a third down five on a five, and they got momentum and went down, got a field goal. And then we turned it over again. Fortunately, we, we uh, kept them out. What about the decision not to sit on the ball on that last interception and to try and throw it? Yeah, we had a minute left to go, you know, and we thought, I don't know why we uh, missed the throw, uh, but we did not hook up. I don't think it was, it was our best play. I thought we knew how to execute. Unfortunately, we did not. Will you go with Terman or Priestley or both in the second half? Uh, we're going to start off with Terman. Okay. Walt Harris, thank you. Good luck in the second half. Ian? All right, Dwayne, good job. The score at halftime here, Pittsburgh leading West Virginia 14-3, halftime at Three Rivers Stadium. Right now, let's head to New York and check in with Tim Brando. All right, Ian, coming up on the AXA halftime report, we'll get you caught up on all of today's action, plus the story of Penn State's Adam Talavero and his road to recovery. After this word from your local stations. Walker, Texas Rangers, CBS Saturdays. It's all here. To put together a big deal, you need vision and resources. Not enough of one or the other, and the deal falls through. Too much of both? That's just about perfect. Fleet commercial and corporate banking. Cash management, credit solutions, global expertise. Together, we're moving forward, always thinking. Fleet. Know what? You've made Nissan a winner. And here's how we're saying thanks with a thank you lease of $369 a month on a new 2001 Nissan Pathfinder SE. In addition, J.D. Power & Associates ranked the Nissan Pathfinder as the most appealing compact sport utility vehicle. And in government crash test, no other SUV outperformed Pathfinder in front and rear occupant side collision testing. Now, some big news on even bigger savings. Now get $2,900 in total savings on our new 2001 Ultima GXE. Go with a winner. Nissan. Driven. Ends November 30th. At the top of the world, there's only one rule. We've lost the summit team. I won't let my sister die. Don't leave anything. I'm coming to get you. On the mountain. <laughs> it's suicide. Larry. Vertical limit. Rated PG-13. Opens everywhere to separate. <gasps> It's the fastest computer on the market. 128 megs of RAM, 900 megahertz processor, 
George still dialing up for internet? George, this connection stinks. It's got every feature you could want. But do you not like speed? Check out that mouse. Rollerball. Get more from the internet with Optimum Online. Spend $100 at the Wiz. Get a high-speed cable modem free. What are you waiting for? Jets kick off with Phil Zim, Sunday morning at 11.30 on CBS2. The AXA Halftime Report is sponsored by AXA Advisors. Building futures. Happy holidays. Welcome to the AXA Halftime Report with the score at Three Rivers. Pittsburgh leading West Virginia 14 to 3. Tim Brando alongside Spencer Tillman. Well, you know, those three interceptions, two of them inside the five yard line. It could be even worse for Don Nealon right, right now. That's right, living dangerously. The problem, though, for Don Nealon's crew is Pittsburgh has found some ballast. They've got uh, Kevon Barlow there with 129 yards, and then Antonio Bryant with 95 yards. It's tough to defensive team when they're working both ends of the spectrum. All right, there's a lot for us to get you caught up on. Let's go right to the board. And LSU, Arkansas, this game. Very meaningful. LSU trying to get to the Cotton Bowl. Arkansas just trying to become bowl eligible. And it's a hog day afternoon in Little Rock. Ooh, pick Suey and Josh Booty, who's been prone to deliver interceptions, throws one to Quentin Caver, who last week stopped Mississippi State's Dante Walker at the one. He gets them the only touchdown of the game. That game moving right along. 626 left. Arkansas leads it 7-3 in the battle for the boot. Nebraska and Colorado, a wild one in the Big 12 today. And the Congress on hand for this one. Tom Osborne spits it. You know, Timmy, when you're running the option and Crouch is going to give ground here, that's usually bad problems because it destroys the pitch relationship between your halfback. Boom, you keep it, brother. It's not an issue at all. In for the 27-yard touchdown. Buffalo, though, they take the lead under a minute remaining. Quarterback Craig Oaks here hits wide receiver Javon Green in the end zone and a two-point conversion there. And Nebraska driving late in the game. Quarterback hook up here. One X guy, Newcomb there on the receiving end, does the job. Sets up the field goal, the backside touch angle there, but he gets it to go through. Nebraska survives a scare. And it's likely they'll wind up in Dallas in the Cotton Bowl, and it could be LSU that's on the other side of that issue. We'll have to wait and see. 34-32, Nebraska the final. They talk about rivalries, Texas and Texas A&M. It's now 10-7 in this game. Brown, a 10-yard interception return for a touchdown. A&M has won 12 of the last 16 meetings between these two. East Carolina and Southern Miss, both of these teams going to bowls. Southern Miss to the Mobile Alabama Bowl and ECU to the brand new Gallery Furniture Bowl. A reminder, every week, be sure to check out the CBS Sports Line 115 poll, which ranks all 115 Division 1A teams. And don't forget to vote in our fan poll to decide who's number one. Just click on NCAA football at cbs.sportsline.com or AOL keyword CBS Sports Line. Coming up, the story of Penn State's Adam Taliaferro, who's fighting hard to recover from a serious spine injury suffered at the beginning of the season. That when the AXA halftime report continues. When we talked about the ground game and the ability to handle a pitch, Tillman taught me all about that. I'll just hand off to Kevon Barlow if I'm Pittsburgh. What's going on? Hey. Wow, this is nice. But I thought Stacy said if you bought new tools, she gets a new dining room set. Yeah, she did. So where are the table and chairs? You're standing on them. <laughs> Fine woodworking tools from Bridget. Name proven by pros since 1923. Take our planer with the power and performance to produce superior finishes on stock up to 13 inches wide. Bridget. Buy them at the Home Depot, where low prices are just the beginning. Everything you need for the holidays at Napa, like a 113-piece toolkit and a set of eight-foot booster cables. This is Cedric. Let's pretend he represents digital photos you took at a medieval fair. Nifty! Oh my! A hacker destroyed Cedric. Bye-bye, Cedric. It's a backup copy of Cedric you saved on an iOmega zip disk. Cedric is back. Take that, you hacker. Zip it. Zip it. Don't panic the clients, but we've got to get out of our HP now. 
what just happened? I'd like to introduce our new CEO and my kid brother, Tommy. CEO! <laughs> See the story behind the numbers. Go to cbs.marketwatch.com. With more of the hottest new releases guaranteed, nobody brings home the magic of the movies like Blockbuster. Rent Big Mama's house at Blockbuster this week and keep it 12 hours longer. The mother of all comedies is here. Martin Lawrence, Big Mama's house, ready PG-13. Guaranteed to be there this week at Blockbuster. Blockbuster, bringing entertainment home. You can feel it right away. There are signs of it everywhere you look. It's something that seems to come naturally once you become a mountaineer. This is West Virginia University, and there is a spirit here like nowhere else. A camaraderie, a shared sense of purpose. It's the feeling that together, we can achieve our best. The AXA Halftime Report is sponsored by AXA Advisors, building futures. Welcome back to the AXA Halftime Report. I'm Tim Brando alongside Spencer Tillman. A reminder, we have college football tomorrow again, a doubleheader. It begins with number 18, Georgia Tech, against their in-state rival, number 19, Georgia. That'll be followed at 3.30 by Boston College against second-ranked Miami in a critical game. This is the time of year for reflection, and sometimes it takes a jolt to remind us of what we have. Back in September, Penn State freshman Adam Taliaferro saw his life take a sudden turn on the football field. While his story is inspirational, it began. Halftime here in Pittsburgh, the Panthers leading the Mountaineers 14 to three, a pivotal game for both schools, hoping to get that bowl bid. Well, you see Mark May here along with Ian Eagle. This was a Pittsburgh All-American, Outland Trophy winner. Yes, clean shaven, well-groomed, but there was a time. Oh, no. Yes, folks, there was a time where oh, my the goodness. mutton shops came into play. Look at that man. Look at that spare tires. <laughs> Not tire, tires. That was a long time ago, and obviously I enjoyed my time at the University of Pittsburgh, but the backyard brawl has been a huge game here. And, oh, again, you guys down in the truck, you guys, I'm going to have my way with you what, guys what about, on this trip to California. What about the quote? His teammates have nicknamed him Mayday. That's Mayday meaning the international distress signal, like the distress that defensive tackles have felt who have lined up against him for the past Three and a half years, there was that PR push to get you the Outland Trophy. But we should mention, you won it so long ago, they didn't actually have a trophy. That's they true. had a plaque. That's true. I don't have the trophy. I have the plaque, and the plaque's in my office. And it was told that Ron Yeri, years before, was the last one to have the trophy, and no one's been able to find it since. <laughs> the Outland plaque, Mayday. I know. I know. On a bounce on the kick from Lots, Sean Terry. He gets hit as he crosses the 30-yard line and comes up short of the 35 by Cody Miller. Take a look at our halftime numbers. A lot of quarterback changes. Really a lot happening in that first half. Three turnovers for Pittsburgh, but West Virginia only scores three points off of those Pittsburgh mistakes. And they couldn't capitalize on the turnover opportunities, but what Pittsburgh's been able to establish in this game, obviously, is the rush yards. They've been able to run the ball with Keevan Barlow, and I think they set a precedent from play one that, hey, we're going to hit you in the mouth and we're going to control the line of scrimmage. Now Scott McBrien will get the start in the second half at quarterback. Don Nealon making that decision. And it's a first and ten at the 33. Handoff. Colbert trying to break a tackle. He will not. Joe Conlon helping to bring him down at the line of scrimmage. No gain along with Mike White. And even though it's a short game, you have to let the Panther defense know that you're going to run the ball because you won't get respect out of the linebackers if you go to your play action. And that's what they're going to try to do on second down. In the first half, they throw the ball on first down the majority of the time, and that put them in second long situations where they could not establish the run. And I think for them to come out even down the 11 points, you've got to stick with your run. Call it a second and 10. Just underway in the third quarter from the 33. Some movement on the right side of that Pittsburgh defensive line and flags come down. Brian Knight had jumped. Number 57. Pittsburgh trying to point in West Virginia's direction saying that they were coaxed into it. Prior to the snap, false start, offense, mm. five-yard penalty, remain second down. 
So that left side of the West Virginia offensive line did something to provoke Brian Knight. Today's Rigid Tools Scholar Athlete Award goes to Mark Ponko at the University of Pittsburgh. Rigid Tools' commitment to the investment of our future is shown today by donating $1,000 to the University of Pittsburgh's General Scholarship Fund. Mark Ponko with a 3.33 GPA. On a second and 15 from the 28. Play fake. McBrien, the lefty, on the flip. Powers brings it in and then spilled out as he crosses the 30-yard line. Just the 12th catch of the year for Wes Hours. And you felt the ground move just a little bit. <laughs> the stadium's still shaking after this, but Wes Hours. And if you're going to tackle Wes Hours, there is no way in the world that you're going to hit him high. You have to hit them low, hit them low on the ankles. It's a nice job of tackling by Brian Beinecke of going low on the big guy, but it still hurt because he fell on him. He is known as the Wes Express and his first catch of the day. Phil Braxton in as the third receiver on a third and 11. The crowd here trying to get involved in this 93rd edition of the Backyard Brawl. Shotgun, McBrien. Let's come in. McBrien throws it. Knocked up in the air and incomplete. Braxton almost made a circus catch in his matchup with Tory Cox. And for Phil Braxton, this is a tremendous job of concentration. It's one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. He gets hit by Tory Cox. Reading the football, he advances coming back towards the football. That's a ball he should have caught. Both hands on that ball. But what an adjustment to come back and get the ball. The blitz was on by the Panther defense. Quarterback Brad Lewis read it. Phil Braxton did a great job of adjusting back for the ball. Mark Fazolari will punt it. B.J. Coonfield, the snapper, and Fazolari able to get it up in the air. Bryant moves forward. Did not call a fair catch, or did he? Flags come down. Sean Swindoll making the stop as he crossed the 35-yard line. And that's going to be the question here on Antonio Bryant. And what an incredible athlete Antonio Bryant is. I think he's showing the country how polished he is just as a sophomore. Sean Swindoll maybe didn't give him enough Interferes room. Interference with the opportunity to catch the kick on the kicking team. Five-yard penalty, first down. So the West Virginia penalty. Swindoll getting a little too close. Here's another look at it. Yeah. Doesn't give him an opportunity to catch the football, but tremendous concentration on Antonio Bryant's part of fielding that ball. How about Bryant not calling the fair catch seeing a white jersey next to him he was still fearless most playmakers they don't want to take the safe way out they want to take a chance German in there at quarterback and a handoff for Barlow up the middle a gain of three on first down it'll be second and seven from the 43 so Terman getting another chance the senior there's another step in the growth of Antonio Bryant on the outside and a running play to block for your running back Size up the defender, get your hands on him, get your hands in tight, and a little push. Now that technique isn't at the top of the line, and you're not going to win any accolades and blocking down the field to play, but at least he got his body between the defender and the running back. On the give, Barlow. Up the middle, Barlow continues to rumble as he crosses into West Virginia territory and brought down at the 44. And the Panthers run the counter tray. You're going to watch the offensive line pull from right to left and clear the way. Brian Anderson, the left guard, Kiawatha Downey, the right tackle. Clear the way, create a hole for running back Keevan Barlow. That's an outstanding job of getting through the hole and knocking down the defender. I would think you as a hog might be familiar with that play. Oh, that is a play that just warms the blood of my heart, my body. That is a play we got to three super. Somewhere Joe Gibbs is smiling right now. Absolutely. They executed very well. Play clock winding down. Terman throw to the sideline. High ball, and Antonio Bryant is dragged down from behind. Lance Frazier gave a little extra something at the end of the play. Gain of about five. On first down. And what we're seeing out of Antonio Bryant, just a sophomore, he's playing like a senior. And I talked about how polished he is. And it's just the way that he acts, the confidence, the air that he brings to the game. And, you know, he knows he's going to come up with a big play. It's just going to be a matter of time. He's done it each and every game he's played. Five catches, 100 yards for Bryant, a finalist for the Politnikoff Award as the top wide receiver in the nation. 
Second and five from the 39. Running play. Barlow in traffic, just keeps the legs churning as he picks up four, a little bit short of a first down. Just about everybody involved defensively for West Virginia. And if you look and the at the clock Pan continues to roll. And uh, excuse me, you look at the Panther offense, you've got an injury on the field. That's Brian Anderson, the right guard. But they're starting to use the clock to their advantage, taking their time, running plays down. Anderson, a sophomore, lost 20 pounds after his freshman year out of Philadelphia. They tend to Anderson, a break in the action. This week in Suzuki Heisman Highlights. This year's MVP has got to be the V6 Grand Vitara by Team Suzuki. Check out this play. With his V6 quad cam engine and ladder box frame, he tackles that mountain like it was an anthill. That's power. With that kind of season, it's no wonder the Grand Vitara has been named the official automobile of the Heisman Trophy. Now at your Suzuki dealer, vote for the Heisman candidate of your choice. Enter to win a V6 Grand Vitara and other great Suzuki products. What kind of a company are we? Like you, we sometimes wonder what might have been. What if we'd married sooner instead of later? Or bought that house? Think of the money we'd have made. Life is a series of decisions which often can't be taken back, which is why planning is important. Talk with us at First Union. We can't change the past, but we can sure help with the future. Need sports equipment? Go to MVP.com. All the best gear, all the best brands, and insight to help you play your best. <laughs> and right now, save up to 50% at our holiday sale. MVP.com. Gear up for sport. Shouldn't everything be this simple? Thousands of new and pre-owned cars from Autobytel.com. Low, no haggle pricing and a pre owned car guarantee. Autobytel.com. Apparently, some people don't know Dremel also makes cordless rotary tools. Dremel cordless rotary tools. For every problem, there's a Dremel solution. Tonight on the Late Show. In honor of Thanksgiving, all of tonight's jokes are leftovers. Thank you very much. Dave's all new with Matthew Broderick and the CBS Mailbag tonight. Brian Anderson was able to walk off the field. They'll make some changes with McCurley moving over to the right side and Shaw now at left guard. John Terman on a quarterback keeper. And a first down at the 32 yard line, a gain of two. What you're going to see now, the Panthers' offense is patient. I think right now in the first half, they realized they made a lot of mistakes by forcing some balls down the field to play. They've got a good running game. It's time to be methodical, take time off the clock, and execute off the team. Pittsburgh with a 14-3 advantage coming up on 10 minutes to play now in the third quarter. Barlow in the backfield. Barlow coming it upfield and brought down from behind as he hit the 30-yard line. A gain of two. It could have been worse, but Rick Sherrod was able to turn him around. Nine. One thing about Keevan Barlow, he runs like it's his last carry. I mean, every time he touches the ball, he runs hard, runs through defenders. I don't think he's been brought down by the first tackler once this afternoon. That's Keevan Barlow, who is a Pittsburgh native. Any memories here at Three Rivers Stadium? Didn't have any collegiate memories that came to mind, but he said the Franco Harris immaculate reception. I wasn't there, but I saw it 10,000 times. <laughs> who didn't if you lived in this town? On second and eight, Barlow keeps on running. Barlow looking to take it to the house, and he does. Yes. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. Third rushing touchdown of the day for Keevan Barlow, the senior, a native of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And Keevan Barlow just runs through tackles. Follows his offensive lineman. He knows where to hit the hole, plants and takes off, but he generates so much power from his hips and his hip rotation. At 6'1, 235 pounds, lower to the ground, but the power that he generates out of his hips and his legs. A new career high, three touchdowns in a game. 
point after Nick Watts. He tacks it on. 21 to 3, the Panthers leading the Mountaineers. Our coverage from Three Rivers Stadium will continue after these words on CBS. The automotive world is hyped for the V6 Grand Vitara from Suzuki. Open Road says it's eye-popping. It's much fun to drive off-road as it is on. Automobile Magazine raves there's more sport in this sport utility. And Road and Track says it's powerful enough to kick sand in the face of every other four-door in its class. So come into your nearest Suzuki dealer and see for yourself why Motor Trend says the Suzuki V6 Grand Vitara must be on your shopping list. Are you following PHRM? Get your clients into PHRM. Clinical testing through the roof. There has been a discovery. We'll be announcing it soon. I hope this works. Me too. See the story behind the numbers. Go to cbs.marketwatch.com. What do we want this year? JPEG of the grandkids would be nice. I want to be a cyber cowboy. I want to check out a chat room. I'm a nut for email. I want to buy my lingerie online. Me too. I want to know what is hip. This year, give your parents the gift they really want. An easy way to stay in touch right from their TV. Web TV from Microsoft. Look for our holiday offer. The Home Depot College Football on CBS. At Three Rivers Stadium, the Pittsburgh Panthers have taken a 21-3 lead on West Virginia. Keevan Barlow is closing in on 1,000 yards for the season. He came in with 781, so it tells you what kind of day he's had. 180 yards on 19 carries. And Nick Lotz will kick it off. Sean Terry, Phil Braxton are deep. Lotz leans into it. It'll be Terry from the six. Looks for an opening. Cuts it upfield, and he's brought down at the 26-yard line. That's a gain of 20 on the return. Lewis Moore with a stop on special teams for Pittsburgh. Three touchdown runs for... Keevan Barlow today. Let's take a look at the last one. They run the counter again. They pull their left guard and left tackle from left to right. Keevan Barlow does an outstanding job of following his big guys. Here you're going to get a hold off right there to seal the end. He's going to take the ball, counter step, come back and follow his blockers, turn it up. Bingo, bango, he's gone. Nice job of running, great job of blocking. That's the way the play is designed. And three carries of 30 or more yards today. Now West Virginia. And an 18-point hole. McBrien remains in a quarterback. Swings it over the middle and complete to Brown at the 40-yard line. First down for West Virginia. A pickup of 14 yards through the air. Shante Spencer with a stop. For West Virginia, in order to make something happen, they have to go vertical with the football. They haven't capitalized on their opportunities of getting turnovers from the Pittsburgh Panthers. Here's a situation where you've got a young quarterback and you expect him to move your team offensively, and Don Nealon knows that. He knows this is the quarterback of the future of West Virginia University, but he's not going to be a part of it. A three-receiver set on a first and ten. On the toss, Coburn flags down as Coburn is forced to the outside in the sideline. Picked up four yards. Is this one coming back? Ryan Smith with the lateral coverage working sideline to sideline today. That'll be offsides Pittsburgh. So a defensive offsides with 846 remaining in the third. And I, and I always say that West Virginia should go back to the run. Their offensive line average is 318 pounds. Rick Gilliam in the middle. Finals for the offsides on the defense. Five yard penalty. Repeat first down. Their fullback averages 290 pounds. So you think they just run the ball, play smash mouse, wear a defense down. They haven't been able to do that. They came out throwing today. And when they have run the ball and stayed with the running game, Avon Colburn's done a decent job running the football. They came in averaging 150 yards on the ground. 
Now facing a first and five, only 37 yards rushing today officially. And some confusion as flags come down. Play clock was down to eight. Prior to the snap, false start, offense, five-yard penalty, remains first down. So they benefit from the Pittsburgh penalty and then a penalty First of their own cost to them. West Virginia. The Mountaineers just can't and take advantage of good fortune. This yards. Whenever they get a turnover, they can't put points on them. Whenever they get a penalty in their direction or create first downs and positive yardage, it always bites them and restricts them from putting points on the board. Well, it's back to a first and ten. Three turnovers in that first half. West Virginia, three takeaways, three points. McBrien throwing to the sideline. Over the head of Antonio Brown. Incomplete. And for Scott McBrien, he's not patient with this offense. And that's the difference between an older quarterback and a Brad Lewis and Scott McBrien, which hasn't had that many snaps. And what he has to do is he has to wait the route out. Simmer down, not only look at your first read, maybe have a chance to look at your second, but the Pittsburgh defense rush is getting to him right now, and I think he's not patient enough with his offense. Well, West Virginia at 6-4, and four, Pittsburgh at 6-4 and four as well. Both teams feeling that a win will guarantee them a bowl. West Virginia an appealing team because they travel well. They could travel between 15 and 18,000 if the bowl game is close. On the misdirection, McBrien avoids the tackler. He throws it long. He had separation. Torrey Cox tipped that ball. Gerald Hayes applied the pressure on McBrien. It's a nice job by quarterback Scott McBrien feeling the pressure. It's a fake reverse, fake it inside, fake it to the outside. And right here, he avoids the sack, steps up tall, and winks the ball down the field to play to Corey Ivey. And at the end of the play, keep an eye on Torrey Cox. Right there, he just tips it just enough to ruin the concentration of Corey Ivey. Right at the last second, gets a finger on the ball and deflects it. Corey Ivey does not have a chance to catch the ball. On a third and 10 now from the 40. Still plenty of time left. 8.35 remaining in the third. Pittsburgh 21, West Virginia 3. McBrien, quick throw out of the shotgun, and Braxton can't hold on to it. McBride's pass was intended for Phil. Phil Braxton, the intended target. Pittsburgh continues to rush seven or eight and try to fluster the freshman. And, I, and this is what I was talking about, about patience in the offense for quarterback Scott McBride. Here he knows the blitz is coming. He knows the blitz, the blitz break off there with his receiver. If he just stays patient, another half a count, he throws the ball in front of his receiver rather than behind him. McBride, 5 for 15, 78 yards, running this West Virginia offense. And now the Mountaineers will punt. Mark Fazolari. It's a low, short punt. And it scoots out of bounds at the 32-yard line. 28-yard punt. The Home Depot College Football on CBS is sponsored by Web TV. CBSMarketWatch.com. Athlac. And by Suzuki. Three River Stadium, the site. The Backyard Brawl, 93rd edition, West Virginia and Pittsburgh. Ian Eagle, Mark May, Dwayne Ballin, our entire CBS crew with you. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. On a handoff, Keegan Barlow crossing the 40-yard line, and he is right at the first down marker. McCurley and Downey combining to create some extra space up front. What a day for Keevan Barlow, our CBS Sportsline stat of the game. There's Barlow, and there's West Virginia. For a complete college football coverage, go to cbs.sportsline.com. I really think he wants to get his 1,000 yards. Well, he's going to have a chance, not on that particular play, as he ran into a crowd. West Virginia forcing him backward. It'll be second and ten. Barlow came in with 781 yards rushing. You say even with a good day, he'll crack 900, 950. A thousand yards almost out of the question. Didn't seem realistic. Particularly in this game, and the, the, the role 
has been reversed. Last year, Avon Colburn, 210 yards in this game. This year, it looks like Kevin Barlow would like to break that and eclipse that mark of what West Virginia did to them last year. On second down, Barlow trying to cut it back. He does pick up four yards as he crosses the 45. Kyle Caden involved in the stop. Wow, that's amazing. And 5.3 the average, that's that's big time numbers. And if you go back and you look at some of the big backs, Ladanian Thomas from TCU, you look at a Deuce McAllister down at Mississippi. And I think he fits right up there with the top backs in the country at this point. You know, you, you talk about top backs. You know, when you see them up close, that really determines the factor if they are an upper echelon back. And I really think Kevin Barlow is. 6'1, 235 pounds. Turbot throwing the long ball. Knocked away at the last moment by Richard Bryant. Already has two picks today. And Turman unable to get it to Latif Grimm. It's fourth down. Nine for West Virginia. Richard Bryant on the other side of the coin has had a heck of a game. He's played everyone well that's on his side of the field. The two interceptions, but right here, that's just a smart play. And it's an easy play because he's running with a receiver and he keeps his eyes on the football. Makes a great adjustment to it. From Bahokee, Florida, the only thing he has to do is gain some weight. He's six foot, 165 pounds. He needs to hang around with his fullback, Wes Hours, a little bit. You remember those 165 pound days? Yeah, that was fourth grade. Fifth grade. <laughs> Andy Lee just gets it off and a flag down. Lee got it hit. Antonio Brown on the return, trying to circle. And another flag on the return. So dueling flags, a third one now comes in late. Sean Terry was the man that was trying to block the punt from Lee, and he made contact. There's going to be a late person foul on West Virginia. One of their players just threw a punch at a Panther player, but there's a high snap that started the playoff again, and we talked about it early. You have a freshman that's doing the snaps. He's had two high snaps. They've been controlled. This is the third one that's going to, that could possibly cost him. This has not been a clean football game, and Don Nealon's final regular season game as head coach of the Mountaineers. But right there, just the trajectory of the ball was high. And it doesn't give your punter enough time to come down with the football and punt the ball, but here it is. It's a nice job of fielding the punt. It's high. There are five flags on the field. Five of them. Just to accentuate that point. Well, I think the last one was a personal foul on Grant Wiley in West Virginia, and he threw a punch, and it's just frustration it was against Torrey Cox. And I think it's at a time where you see some of the players from West Virginia, and this is an important game, and it's a meaningful game, and it's a big game. It sure is. That frustration right now is at its peak. Talked about some of the bowls being mentioned, the Gator Bowl, the Insight.com Bowl, the Music City Bowl, all out there. We had two live ball fouls. Personal foul, roughing the kicker on the receiving team. Then during the return, an illegal block in the back mm. on the receiving team. After the play was over, we had three personal fouls. Well, this is going to back them up to the tunnel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they may be out in the Monongahela River yeah. after this one. Three personal fouls after the play. I need a calculator to figure this out. And I think the officials may need the same. Five penalties called, five flags. It's rare that you see individual flags for specific penalties. Normally, look at them. Two officials will There's see two. the same There's one. Three. There's another one down the field on about the 32. Hmm. Well, they'll sort this one out. 6:31 remaining in the third quarter, and the Panthers maintaining a 21-3 lead. More info. The personal foul, roughing the kicker by the defense will be accepted. The illegal block in the back on the return, that will be declined. We will enforce the roughing the kicker from the line of scrimmage, 15 yards. Yep. Them, You're doing a lot of talking. <laughs> personal foul on Pittsburgh, and we had two dead ball personal fouls on West Virginia. He's out of breath. We will enforce the one personal dead ball foul on West Virginia. Wow. He needs Somebody get Dennis a lozenge. <laughs> need a scroll to read that. It's like he's reading a teleprompter. 
Wow. I think he just covered every single rule in the book. But the thing is, he did a tremendous job of explaining it to everyone. Thank God this isn't in Florida. They'd never find out the results of this. Got to get in one low blow, didn't you? One shot. One shot. Well, the officials still huddling up. So Pittsburgh will hold on to the football and look where they get it. At the 24-yard line, 30 yards worth of penalties called on Don Nealon's club. The hat is off. The headset is off. What a strange turn here. West Virginia was expecting to get the football trailing by 18 points. Instead, Pittsburgh moves it all the way to the 24. Well, Brian Anderson has returned for Pittsburgh. You might recall that he left the field earlier in pain, so he's back at right guard. Maybe we should reset the entire lineup for him at this point. It's been that, that much of a break in the action for Walt Harris's offense. On a first and ten at the 24, motion man is Rutherford. Terman, handoff, ball up, cutting it upfield. Kevin Garland will take it all the way. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. Ryan, another counter trade. That seems to be their bread and butter play in the second half. What a game it's been for Barlow. Four touchdowns in his final regular season game as a collegiate. What a game, and watch the blocking, the kick out here, the turn up. Now follow your blockers, a seal on the inside, a seal on the outside. Get through the hole and make something happen. What a job of picking apart the defense by Keevan Barlow. Barlow extends the Pittsburgh lead, 27 to three. Nick Lotz, the extra point. Well, it took a while to get there, but the Panthers got the football back after the penalties, one play, and Barlow takes it to the end zone. Want to start a family? Right now? I just got supplemental insurance. What's that? Half flat. Well, if we get sick, our health insurance won't cover things like lost pay <clears throat> or other expenses. <laughs> This does. What's it called? Affleck! I don't know. <laughs> Affleck! Affleck, without it, no insurance is complete. This week in Suzuki Heisman Highlights. This year's MVP has got to be the V6 Grand Vitara by Team Suzuki. Check out this play. With his V6 quad cam engine and ladder box frame, he tackles that mountain like it was an anthill. That's power. With that kind of season, it's no wonder the Grand Vitara has been named the official automobile of the Heisman Trophy. Now at your Suzuki dealer, vote for the Heisman candidate of your choice. Enter to win a V6 Grand Vitara and other great Suzuki products. And now a look at this week's Suzuki Heisman Watch Update. Tim Brando with Spencer Tillman. Now five guys will get the invitation from the Downtown Athletic Club. We agree on the top four choices, Heifel, Winky, Tomlinson, and Breeze. We will debate the fifth. Timmy, there are three star athletes on our five-man list, and two of them send Santana Moss Christmas cards. Santana is my fifth. Uh, Michael Vick is mine. I don't believe you penalize him because of an injury. Now, as far as Josh Heifel is concerned, I'm ready to, to vote with my ballot, but yeah. not until after he beats Kansas State. You can wait if you choose. Partner mine's going in. Okay. It's a done deal. Keep licking. For more information on the Suzuki Heisman Watch, log on to CBS.Sports. <laughs> Keevan Barlow, a new career high, 218 yards rushing. He is one yard shy of 1,000 for the season. And more importantly for his team, a 28-3 to three lead, Pittsburgh. Lots will kick it off for the Panthers. Sean Terry, Phil Braxton are waiting. Pittsburgh with a chance to move to 7-4 and four on the season. After starting the year five and one such promise came within an eyelash of being a nationally ranked team. Four touchdowns for Barlow that's too shy of a school record six. And here's Lots. Kick will be taken by Terry at the 11th looking for an angle Terry. Terry. He's going to go. Terry takes it back all the way for the touchdown.
Sean Terry, the junior, from Homestead, Florida. An 89-yard kick return for the score. And a tremendous job of following his blockers. He's 11th in the country at returning kicks, averaging 25.4. Had a couple of big ones today, but no one's even close to him. You can tip your hat to Sean Terry, but you've got to tip your hat to his blockers on the kickoff return team because no one touched him the entire return. His second touchdown of the season off a kick return had one go for 100 yards. And nobody in the backfield, they're waiting to line up for the extra point. It helps to get the kicker out. Well, usually that's an integral part to the point after process. Brendan Rao will do the honors. He missed, it. he missed it. They get the touchdown. They don't get the point after. 28 to 9 after the Terry return. The Home Depot College football will continue. The scoring recap brought to you by Exxon. Here's how we got here. This 56 yard run by Barlow, a 7 0 lead. 14 0. Barlow takes it in two yards away. 14 3 as Rao kicked a 43 yard field goal in the second quarter. And that was our halftime score in the third. 30 yard touchdown. Barlow, 21 3 Pittsburgh. Barlow again, 24 yard touchdown run, 28 to 3. And Not West Virginia getting its first touchdown of the day on an 89 yard return by Sean Terry. The showing his speed, his heels to the field. West Virginia kicking it off. Torrey Cox will take it from the seven. Cox looks for an opening. Cox loses the football. Covers it. Nick Goings went up high. Corey McIntyre had knocked it out. And West Virginia nearly had the ball at the Pittsburgh 30 yard line with a chance to cut even deeper into this Pittsburgh lead. This could have been a huge turn of events for the West Virginia Mountaineers. Scoring on a kickoff return, knocking the ball out on the preceding return, but nice job, special teams, the Pittsburgh Panthers. Coming down with the ball. It's knocked out. It gets knocked way up in the air. Now it's a jump ball situation, and Nick Goins comes down with it. So the line of scrimmage will be the 29. John Terman remains in a quarterback for Pittsburgh on a first and 10. Barlow with a chance to go over 1,000 yards for the season. Needs just one yard. Under six minutes to play in the third. Hand up. Barlow. He's got 1,000 and a little bit more as he crosses the 35-yard line. 1,008 yards for Keevan Barlow on the 2000 season. And Barlow is going to the sideline. Limping just a little bit as he jogs. For Keevan Barlow, he follows a long line of great running backs at the University of Pittsburgh. Tony Dorsett. Ironhead Hayward, mm -hmm. and most recently the biggest name, Curtis Martin of the New York Jets. So Nick Goings will step in. He has spelled Barlow at times this year, a transfer from Ohio State, who squats more than 600 pounds. And it's Goings. Spun down as he gets the first down. Richard Bryant getting a handle on him. But he gains five chunks of yardage in the running game for the Pittsburgh offense. We talked to Walt Harris. He told us that Nick Goings gives him a spark offensively. They like to bring him in off the sideline, off the bench, give him a couple shots at it. It's a change of pace running style for the Panther offense. Goings is a senior from Dublin, Ohio. And Harris has had the pleasure of working with both of them during his four year stay. Barlow really made a point to say that Harris changed the attitude in this Pittsburgh program. They were down and out before he got there. Came over from the Ohio State program with the offensive coordinator. And Goings getting the call again. You see the connection. 
goings from Ohio State. Priestley from Ohio State as well. Two transfers that have helped this team during Harris's stay and the loss of one on the play. Ryan, a lot of times when a coach that you recruited that recruits you in the college leaves and gets a better position as a head coach someplace, if you're not the starter where you are in college at that time, mm -hmm. you're going to look to transfer. Because one, one of the reasons why you went to this school in the beginning was because of the recruiter that recruited you, and that was Walt Harris. But he's got a great relationship with the players on this team, particularly the older players on this team, because they've given up a great sacrifice, but they've enjoyed their time. On second and 11, Terman looking to throw it. Terman, long ball. Separation for Bryant. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. Eight yards through the air. And a frustrating day for Don Nealon. John Turman, the senior, did not play most of the first half. Harris decides to go with him here in the second half. And we'll take a look at this throw. But this is just pure speed. He splits the defenders right down the middle. It's just a streak. Just go. Beat him. He does. Perfectly thrown pass by Turman. And Antonio Bryant, we talked about his big play ability. Time and time again, he comes up with a big play. And Six. I keep saying it again, I cannot believe the maturity out of a sophomore at this point in his young collegiate career. Six catches, 158 yards and a touchdown. Extra point, Nick Locks. So West Virginia's touchdown nullified quickly. Pittsburgh with their big play capability. They lead West Virginia in a route late in the third quarter. This is my killer DVD system. This is my killer DVD rental section. You have the hardware. Blockbuster has the software. We have more DVDs to rent than ever, and you like your DVD rental guaranteed. The best way to DVD is Blockbuster. Rent X-Men this week at Blockbuster. They're coming. We're not what you think. With 10 minutes of never-before-seen footage. X-Men. Rated PG-13. Guaranteed to be there on VHS and available on DVD this week at Blockbuster. Here's the snap. The kick is away. It, it is good! Play of the ball game to the tight end Brominski. He got it down. Go! 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 This kick is in the air. It is gone. It is gone. One of the greatest wins ever. Let that celebration begin. Need a good babysitter? Hi. <laughs> don't count on the King of Queens. At both legs in one hole. I don't know what to do. All new episodes, CBS Monday. <laughs> Antonio O'Brien, his ninth career 100-yard game in a Panther uniform. This is his 22nd game as a college-wide receiver. And the Panthers enjoying themselves on the sidelines after getting blown out by West Virginia last year. It's Pittsburgh that has done the dominating here today. Right, not only last year, the last two years, the combined score was 104 to 35. West Virginia put up 52 points two consecutive years. On the Pittsburgh Panthers. West Virginia has won seven of eight meetings in the series. Lots kicks it off. Terry had the long return. He'll try it again from the six. And this time he was able to get across the 20, and that's it. The words exchanged afterwards, some pushing and shoving. Cody Miller making the stop. Out on the sideline. You're going to see a lot of jawing out there, particularly at this point in the game, because one team has a major lead on the other. A lot of these players went to the same high school. Played in the same area, obviously in Western Pennsylvania. They played against each other in the same division and conferences, so they know each other. It's almost bragging rights one for universities, but bragging rights against each other. Now, West Virginia needs to show something offensively. 35 to 9, Pittsburgh, under four minutes left in the third. Handoff, over, and he is stacked up just before he hits the 25 yard line. It's a gain of three. Pittsburgh com coming together to make that stop up the middle. And the clock is moving now. Three and a half to play in the third. Walt Harris began his coaching career at his alma mater, El Camino High School in San Francisco, California. A great teacher of the passing game. Came out, went to a bowl game in 1997, went to the Liberty Bowl. 
and that's the last winning season that Pittsburgh has put up on the board. He's put up another this year. Colburn again gets the call straight ahead for three yards. Claude Harriet combining with Ryan Smith. Let's go down to Dwayne Ballard. Ian, when Brad Lewis, the West Virginia quarterback, came out of the game in the first half, he had hurt himself. He had hurt his knee, but he has another problem that is compounding that. He hurt his right hand early in the season when he hit a helmet of an opposing player. Since then, he's had a problem with feeling in his hand and taking snaps properly. It's highly unlikely he'll be back in the game today because he also his inconsistency was a reason he was pulled out. So McBride may be the guy the rest of the night. Yep, the Shady Side Ohio native was replaced. McBrien, the man who replaced him, too low for Corey Ivey. And Ivey playing in his final regular season game. The senior from Boca Raton. And it's just interesting if you look at both teams offensively. Corey Ivey, Boca Raton, Florida. Antonio Brown, Miami. It seems like both teams to get wide receivers and quality wide receivers. And if you look at the University of Pittsburgh, Antonio Bryant, Miami. Latif Grimm, Stockton, California. They had to go across the country to get the receivers. Warm weather clients. That's where you, climates. That's where you want your speed. You want your speed guys to come from warm weather climates. Vasilari with the punt. And the return for Bryant. Antonio Bryant has done a little bit of everything today. Can he return one the distance? Bryant down the sideline. Stop and go move and forced out of bounds at the 25. Oh, these guys are fired up on the Pittsburgh sideline. Torrey Cox with a nice block up front. A 45 yard punt return. And a huge block by Torrey Cox. You're going to see it coming right to your screen right there. Keep an eye on number five. And you could hear that shot all the way up to the booth. Tremendous job by the return teams coming down, setting up blocks, and a great job of Antonio Bryant of following his blocks and then make something happen and making people miss. Yeah, one thing Antonio Bryant mentioned, the weather here in Pittsburgh, you talked about yeah. the warm weather places that all these guys are from. He said, I'm not used to this. Cold. Antonio Bryant, in chatting with him, he had never seen snow before. First time was on a fifth grade trip to Spain. So he had never seen North American <laughs> snow as Nick Goins gets the carry. How many people go on a fifth grade trip to Spain? That's the one thing that blew me away on that story. I went to Washington, D.C. maybe in so sixth grade. Yeah, sixth grade, you go to Washington, D.C. if you're a safety patrol or something. And that's a big trip. Yeah, and he went to Spain. I've never heard of that. That blew me away. Well, Antonio Bryant. The cold weather to him, not so cold for Brian Knight on the defense for Pittsburgh. He's from Buffalo. This is like summer for him, he told us. And a second and 12. Terman able to get rid of it. Incomplete. A minute 21 left now in the third. Grant Wiley was applying the pressure in the pocket on Terman. Now, going back to Antonio Bryant, you'd wonder why a player out of the state of Florida wouldn't go to a Florida State, mm -hmm. Miami, University of Florida, and he gets out of there. He wasn't highly recruited out of college. He wanted to go to a Division I school and play. The University of Pittsburgh goes down there, scoops him up, and he's a star. He's a legitimate star. Yeah, you're right. And talking with him, that's what he said his goal was, just to play Division I football. Normally, if you're a blue chip recruit, you can go anywhere. Yeah, you know you're playing Division I. It's a matter of are you playing for a national champion. Here's Terman. On third down, Terman up in the air. And incomplete. Yeah. Lamar Slay, the intended receiver, and Lance Frazier able to get a piece of it. Why is Pittsburgh still throwing the football, you may ask, with a minute 16 left in the third and a huge lead? Well, I think right now you've got a situation where a lot of the players remember those 52-point games the last two years, and some of the players remember West Virginia dancing on the sidelines and throwing in the fourth quarter when they had a huge lead. Mm -hmm. And I think you look back, a lot of the players are probably prompting their head coach, Walt Harris, not to let up. Let's keep pouring it on. Well, a 44-yard field goal attempt for Nick Lotz. Chance to extend the lead. Lotz. Bangs it through as it just gets over the crossbar. Pittsburgh with a 38-9 advantage. Late stages, third quarter. Little body English, get going, get going, get it through. 
I got it. I knew it all the time. And Coach Wall Harris, he didn't know it all the time. He said, well, is it going to go? Yes! Nick Lotz, Big East Academic All-American. A junior contributing to Pittsburgh's big lead here today. Chance to tell you about Sunday and the NFL on CBS rocks with doubleheader action. First, Rob Johnson sparks the Bills against Warren Sapp and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Then, Dave Wanstead's Miami Dolphins battle Peyton Manning and the Colts. Or, the Broncos take on the Seahawks. Other action from around the country as well. Check your local listings beginning with Jim Craig, Randy, Jerry, Mike, and Marcus on the NFL Today, right here on CBS. Don Nealon's team trailing 38-9. Nealon was hoping to go to a bowl game. It's still a possibility. They are bowl eligible. Nealon has a 16-year streak without a bowl victory. Eight straight losses in bowl games. Phil Braxton on the return from the eight. Braxton looking for an angle, and he is hit shy of the 25-yard line by Shantae Spencer. Well, let's take you back now. Another... Don Nealon Mountaineer moment, the Fiesta Bowl. Nealon's Mountaineers were 11-0 facing Lou Holtz in the 1989 Fiesta Bowl, the national championship on the line. Tony Rice, Rocket Ismail. That ended West Virginia's chances. Notre Dame with a win, 34-21. Major Harris and company come up just a little bit short. And those are some of the things that Don Nealon's been able to do at West Virginia University. We took over this program. They were the sisters of the poor, basically, mm -hmm. in college football. They couldn't beat anyone. Off play action, McBrien rollout. McBrien throwing to the sidelines. Was he in? Antonio Brown. Yes. Catch made and a first down. Pittsburgh, the coaching staff, <laughs> giving the juggling signal. I think that's the universal signal for juggling. And Paul Rhodes, the defensive coordinator on the sidelines, he's just getting into it on the sidelines, giving the officials on the sidelines a little bit in their ear on this because he doesn't believe it's a catch, but I'm sure they know it is. That's a nice job. He wasn't bobbling that ball. He had possession of it. Little tiptoe on the sideline for Brown. And a new set of downs for West Virginia. 55 seconds now left. Coach Rhodes, just keep a camera on him. He's a fun guy to watch. Oh, he is. He's part of the game himself. First and 10 now. From the 36, Coburn in the backfield. He'll get the call. Avon Coburn tried to slip a tackle initially. Finally, Nick Cole touched him up. It's a gain of two. Ryan Gonzalez had a chance to bring him down for a loss. And time trickling away here in the third. For the West Virginia Mountaineers, mentally, they have to stay into this game. They can't stray mentally from this game. That's when injuries occur. You have to concentrate. It's not over. It's a big game. And I'm sure on the sidelines, the guys aren't happy about this. They wanted to make sure to give Don Neal in the victory. Or at least have a close game. Well, they're trying to send him out in style. Absolutely, but there's still a lot of time left in this game. Another full quarter to play. They did get Neal in a win in his final game. At home last week, there's a throw and a catch made by Brown. Into Pittsburgh territory and down at the 48. Mountaineer field last week. It was West Virginia who put a hurting on East Carolina, 42 to 24. They scored 27 points in the first half, which was a season high for this Mountaineer offense. That's the end of the third quarter with a score. Pittsburgh 38, West Virginia 9. We'll return to Three Rivers Stadium right after this message and a word from your local station.
Fry, George Foreman Grills, America's favorite grilling machines, are number one on everyone's list. Moms want them, dads want them, grandmas want them, even college kids. It's great for the whole family. Start the new year outright. Knock out the fat for healthy meals that will be appreciated every day. Fish, chicken, steaks, even veggies, they all come out tasty. My George Foreman Lean Mean Fat Reducing Grilling Machines. Find them in all your favorite stores from coast to coast. It's a real knockout package. Kentucky heads into Tar Heel territory to face Joe Forte and North Carolina as two of the nation's top teams jumpstart NCAA basketball on CBS. The District, Saturdays on CBS. It's all here. Your Toyota dealers hope you have lots to be thankful for this Thanksgiving. In fact, they have something for you to be thankful for. 2.9% APR financing for two years on Toyota's most popular cars and trucks. 2.9%. And get this, you won't have any payments for 90 days. That's like some serious extra holiday cash. 2.9, no payments for 90 days. So forget the mall this Thanksgiving weekend. Get to your Toyota dealer. You'll be thankful you did. To put together a big deal, you need vision and resources. Not enough of one or the other, and the deal falls through. Too much of both, that's just about perfect. Fleet commercial and corporate banking. Cash management, credit solutions, global expertise. Together we're moving forward, always thinking. Fleet. Magical gifts in one easy click. Turn on the fun. Best Buy. For the latest on the battle for the White House, stay with the CBS2 Information Network. Pittsburgh outscores West Virginia 24-6 in the third quarter to take complete control of this game. As we start play in the fourth. McBrien back to throw it. Guns tipped and caught. Was it a clean catch for Terry? At the 35-yard line, it covers 17 yards through the air. This is a tremendous job of Sean Terry of staying with the ball, concentrating, and watching the ball. He's got to adjust his body, come back, and grab the ball for reception. It came off of Ryan Gonzalez, the middle linebacker. And that, the first play of the fourth quarter. Ian Eagle, Mark May, Dwayne Ballin, our CBS crew with you from Three Rivers Stadium in Pittsburgh. 38 to 9, Pittsburgh leading West Virginia in the backyard brawl. Avon Colburn dancing his way to the outside, forced out of bounds at the 32. And he picks up three, Lewis Moore, first man to get there on the sideline. And out in front, Wes Hours with the block, and I'm waiting for Wes Hours to run with the football. Just once, give the big man, feed him a little bit, give him the football. But at 290 pounds, I want to see him carry the football in this game. Hours out of Rawlings, Maryland, Westmore High School. And it's safe to say he won't be carrying it on this play. Watching from the sideline on a second and seven. In motion, Braxton. McBrien, rolling, moving pocket, throwing on the run, and complete to Brown. Well executed play. That's a first down for West Virginia. Line of scrimmage just short of the 17, 15-yard pass play. Now this is a speed play. Take the ball, roll out of the pocket, create something, make something happen. And Don Nealon told us that he's probably his best, at, best athlete at the quarterback position. I'm very surprised they did not go with this play earlier. Roll your quarterback out, create something, make something happen. Take away the blitz of the Pittsburgh defense. And Mark, your dream may come true. Wes Hours breaks the huddle. Brown with eight catches and 80 yards. Hours is in the backfield on a first and ten. Nick Ryan. Play action. Floats it up. Caught initially and then drop. Corey Ivey, they'll give him the touchdown. West Virginia. Talk about a bang bang play and decision. A wonderful throw by quarterback spot Scott McBrien to put the ball right on the money, but how long does he have possession with this ball? Corey Ivory's got to catch the ball, gets knocked out immediately. 
Oh. I don't know about that one. Does he have the percent? Well, what do you very count close. to? It's, That's one Mississippi. Let's put it like this. It. It's a touchdown, West Virginia. Brendan Rao with the extra point for West Virginia. Now trailing at 38 to 15. And he splits the uprights. Early in the fourth, West Virginia with a passing touchdown. McBrien to Ivy, but still down big. Dr. Roger Maxfield is ready for a professional money manager. The kind he never thought would handle individual portfolios. One of the best is a few feet away. If only the two could meet. See how we earn it. Solomon Smith Barney. Welcome to America Online, new version 6.0. The easiest just got even easier. You just plug it in and you go. With 6.0, all the best features are even better. You've got mail. Customer service is always there to help. Parental controls help safeguard our kids. You can log on from anywhere. And now you can even hear your AOL email and get your favorite features on any phone just by dialing a toll-free number. 6.0 is the best AOL ever. America Online, new version 6.0. So easy to use, no wonder it's number one. Call 1-800-4-ONLINE now. Clues left behind by a killer. Somebody's obviously making this personal. Lead to a shocking discovery. What about the bottom print? Came back you. All new CSI, CBS Tonight. Fifth receiving touchdown of the season for senior Corey Ivey. And that one may have been a gift. Didn't hold on to it for very long, but the officials gave it to him. Walt Harris, during that timeout, after seeing the replay on the big screen here at Three Rivers, wasn't all that pleased. Not at all. On the kickoff. Rod Rutherford to return. Rutherford remaining on his feet and brought down at the 22. Phil Braxton making the stop on special teams after the 12-yard return. Don Nealon wrapping up his 21st season at West Virginia and retiring. At the end of the year, another Coach Nealon Mountaineer moment. Penn State at West Virginia. Finally, West Virginia defeats Penn State. First time that Don Nealon was able to say he got a win over Joe Paterno. And that's what West Virginia fans wanted, to beat Penn State, to beat Pittsburgh, to be legitimate in this area of the country. A two-yard gain for Nick Goings up the middle, David Carter with a stop. And the speculation out there about the replacement for Don Nealon, Rich Rodriguez, Clemson offensive coordinator. Some believe that there will be a press conference as early as Sunday, maybe even Monday. May depend upon what goes on with the bowl game. If West Virginia won this game, there was a chance that the Mountaineers would face Clemson, the team that Rodriguez is currently working for, in the Gator Bowl. That would have made for a fairly peculiar situation. Nick Goings is dragged down from behind by Jason Davis. Odds are, if Rodriguez is the guy and if these two teams ever did meet in a bowl game, Rodriguez probably would have stepped aside. I would think that would be the honorable thing to do because, you know, obviously you're with one team and you're playing against another team and you've got to go recruit for that other team. So I think the smart thing to do would be to stand aside. You know, my own personal reasons on Don Nealon and watching the things that he's done over the years at West Virginia. They had a new stadium his first year there, but he was able to bring in fans, fan support, alumni, new facilities there. Now people across the country recognize West Virginia. Terman. Good sideline route to Latif Grimm. And he is forced out of bounds as he crossed the 35-yard line. It was a third and eight. 
They needed to get to the 37. And it doesn't appear to be enough. Time out for measurement. You know, one thing for the wide receivers of Pittsburgh, Bryant and Grimm, and talking with Antonio Bryant, they certainly take pride in what they've done as a tandem. And Bryant told us, you know, we look at Minnesota in the NFL and St. Louis and how those guys feed off one another. We try to do the same thing here with the Panthers. And they've obviously accomplished that. And what's key in this situation is Latif Grimm, he was the star. He was the go-to guy until Antonio Bryant came mm -hmm. along last year and this year. And, and what Walt Harris told us that it, he's been phenomenal in actually handing off the baton to Antonio Bryant. And here's a guy that's a superstar basically on the team and realized that he's not that guy anymore. It is a first down for Pittsburgh. Grimm is a two-time all Big East selection. He's actually Pittsburgh's all-time reception leader as well. A record that very easily could be broken by Antonio Bryant if he stays all four years of his eligibility. And that's a major question. When you see a talent like this, you wonder if they're, they're going to stay there four years. And I, I believe that he'll stay at least one more year. And I, I think he'll grow in that year. And he'll, he'll learn a lot. And he'll mature in that year because he's still a very young player. But I think he has the ability right now. When you see what he's able to do against other players, one-on-one, -on -one, the place that he can make returning balls out there as a wide receiver. I think he's grown in leaps and bounds and actually his second year. Pittsburgh keeps throwing the football. It's Terman over the middle and incomplete. Bryant, the intended target, but Terman bounced it to him. Chris Edmonds applying the pressure. Edmonds attended high school in Pittsburgh after growing up in Atlanta. Now we asked Chris Edmonds and he thought of maybe going to the University of Pittsburgh as a Panther. He said, no, they wanted me as a wide receiver. Ended up going to West Virginia, wanted to get out of this area, didn't want to play in a big city, wanted a college atmosphere, as he told us. And also, he worked hard in the offseason. He gained about 30 pounds and increased his strength up to 500 pounds on the bench, moving from inside to rush backer. And he's really made the move. And Don Nealon said he's very proud of him, what he's been able to do making that move. But here's a player that they feel on defense. Steve Dunlap, the defensive coordinator, who's been there 17 years, feels that Chris Edmonds is the best linebacker he's had. His 34th Illegal career substitution stop. on the offense. Five yard penalty. Remain second down. Coming up tonight on CBS, a serial killer is leaving behind clues at, a, at his crime scenes. Now a top investigator is in for a surprise. It's an all new episode of TV's highest rated new drama, CSI. That's tonight on CBS. Still over 11 minutes left in this marathon game in Pittsburgh. 38 to 16, the Panthers leading the West Virginia Mountaineers in the second and 15 now for Pitt. Despite the big lead, Herman keeps throwing the football. This one is knocked up in the air and intercepted a clear path to the end zone, taking it back the distance. Lance Frazier, touchdown, Mountaineers. I'll tell you one thing, Ian. In the backyard brawl, it's not over till it's over. There's a lot of time left in this game. Teams have come back from more deficits than this in this situation in this game. But for quarterback John Turman, he's got to feel the defense in front of him. He feels the pressure of the defense, the front line getting close to him. Throw the ball away. You're a tall quarterback at 6'4". That shouldn't happen in that situation. But an outstanding play by Lance Frazier, who's been taken to task this afternoon and this evening by Antonio O'Brien all afternoon. And he comes up with a big play, the interception and the return for the touchdown. It may have came off the back of the helmet of Matt Morgan. Another one. And that's a miss on the extra point. Well, that's big also. Uh, this could be a, a 38 to 24 game. Instead, it's a 16 point disparity. Two missed extra points for West Virginia. The Mountaineers believe they're still in it in the fourth. This is my killer DVD system. This is my killer DVD rental section. You have the hardware. Blockbuster has the software. We have more DVDs to rent than ever, and you like your DVD rental guaranteed. The best way to DVD is Blockbuster. Rent Chicken Run this week at Blockbuster. When two chickens decide to rebel against the evil farm owners, you'll find there's nothing more determined than poultry with a plan. Chicken Run. Rated G. Rent or buy it on DVD or VHS this week at Blockbuster. This is when a lot of people start to worry. 
Are they ahead or behind in the race for college, retirement? Mike Jarvis, AXA Advisors. Will they have enough to do the things they want? I tell my clients a good plan can get them through, and it's never too late to get started. AXA Advisors is one-on-one -on -one financial help. Okay, so you're a little behind. You can catch up. I can show you how. AXA Advisors, building futures. Need sports equipment? Go to MVP.com. All the best gear, all the best brands, and insight to help you play your best. <laughs> and right now, save up to 50% at our holiday sale. MVP.com. Gear up for sport. The Home Depot College Football on CBS is sponsored by Blockbuster. AXA Advisors, MVP.com, and by Mercedes-Benz. Welcome back to Pittsburgh, 38 to 22. The Panthers leading the Mountaineers with 11.03 left. That 16-point disparity means that West Virginia with two touchdowns and two two-point conversions is still alive in this game. After the interception return for a touchdown, to the sideline, straddling it at the 17-yard line, Rod Rutherford. Just trying to remain in bounds and turn it into some yardage up the field. Rutherford still learning. He's a redshirt freshman. So Pittsburgh deciding to throw the football in the fourth quarter. They've been able to run the football well with Keevan Barlow, and Barlow is going to be on the field on this drive wide receiver university something that Walt Harris has been promoting the numbers by Antonio Bryant they're phenomenal and that's in nine games he missed a game this season the future is in the ball of his hand he's only going to get better now they go to the run Barlow and able to pick up seven yards on first down taking it to the 25 yard line Kyle Caden to stop, and now the clock will move, something that Pittsburgh could have done in its last possession. And time now becoming such a factor in a 16-point game. And I think they have to stick with the run in this situation. And, and Keevan Barlow's having a career game, obviously, in this situation. You know, now it's time to put it to rest, take time off the clock, move the chains, use the clock to your advantage. Don't give the opposition another opportunity on the tournament. Lasaka Polite in front of Barlow. And this will be Barlow trying to get it around the end. Turns it upfield. And he's brought down parallel with the marker. Sean Hackett cut him down low. Hackett made the tackle. Nine, when a running back has a big game like Kevin Barlow's having this afternoon, a lot of us tend to forget about the offensive line. I won't. But there's been a big change on the offensive line. Jeff McCurley, the starting center, started the game at left guard. The backup center, Chad Reed, elevates himself from backup to starter. And all of a sudden, your tailback has a career day, over 200 yards rushing. It's a measurement, and it will be short by about the length of the football. It's a third and, I'd say, about a foot. 10-10 left in the fourth. Walt Harris looking for his best record in his four years at Pittsburgh. Finished 6-6 six and six in his first season, 1997, going to the Liberty Bowl and coming up short. And they beat West Virginia that year in triple overtime. And with some of the players that we spoke with this week, that was a memory that stood out in the Backyard Brawl series, three overtimes. Imagine you play three overtimes in this game today. No, you'd be here until midnight. We might be anyway. We might anyway, but Walt Harris, you saw the movement he was doing with his arms like milking a cow, telling his quarterback to milk the clock. The clock started at 25 seconds. Take it all the way down to inside five seconds before he's happy. Terman trying to budge his way forward. And this will all depend on the spot. They needed to get a foot for the first down. 38 to 22, Pittsburgh leading West Virginia, 9.45 remaining in the fourth. And if this is a first down for Pittsburgh, then they'll be able to use more of the clock. They'll have to take another measurement, bring out the chains. I believe they're gonna be short on yeah. this time. Uh, clearly, from this angle. 
Yeah, they're well short. Wow. They might have gained an inch. No push by the Pittsburgh Panther offensive line. Great job by the West Virginia defensive line. Staying low, submarining their bodies, pushing the quarterback, John Truman, backwards, rejecting him at the line of scrimmage point of attack. If I've got to keep him Barlow, he's had an outstanding career day. Hand him the football. He hasn't steered you wrong yet. He's gotten positive yardage on every carry today. Give him the football. But for Don Nealon, this is a huge lift. Now his team's starting to believe at this point. And Pittsburgh is keeping West Virginia in this game. 9.45 left. And Andy Lee will punt it. Snapper is Jonathan Sinner. Antonio Brown is waiting. He's capable of bringing one back. Brown backpedals. Catches at the 25. Does he have enough room to work with? Here's Brown turning the corner. And he is level at the 31-yard line. Brian Beinecke with a stuff on special teams after the 48-yard punt. 38 to 22, Panthers. So you want to get more out of life? <laughs> Take a bubble bath. Smile more. Fall in love. Fall in love. This is your homeland. I read a book by Henry Miller. Do the Lombada, the forbidden dance. Once in your life, it couldn't hurt. Get a really cool car. <laughs> that Nakatani merger is brilliant. We gotta move on that now. Talk to me about the Nakatani merger. It's big. Deals like that don't happen overnight. I wonder what brought those two together. <laughs> You make that putt, Nakatani. You got yourself a deal. See the story behind the numbers. Go to cbs.marketwatch.com. What do we want this year? A JPEG of the grandkids would be nice. I want to be a cyber cowboy. I want to check out a chat room. I'm a nut for email. I want to buy my lingerie online. Me too. I want to know what is hip. This year, give your parents the gift they really want. An easy way to stay in touch right from their TV. Web TV from Microsoft. Look for our holiday offer. I'll be telling you which teams are headed uptown and which teams are headed downtown. I'll tell you why it's wrong. Back in Pittsburgh, a first and 10 at the 31 for West Virginia. Scott McBride has been directing this offense. The lefty freshman, McBride throwing on first down. Caught in stride. Ivy is tripped up by the shoelaces by Tory Cox. That one would have been a quick score. And what a beautiful, deep timing slant. On the outside, Corey Ivy. It's going to push the defender up the field, plant, make his move, and run the skinny lane to the post. And an excellent job, and I mean an excellent job, Scott McBride delivering the ball in stride. Hitting your receiver in stride, it's all about time. 37 yards. McBride to Ivy. Cox is forced to the sideline with an injury. West Virginia given a second chance, and they're trying to take advantage of it. Brown, the motion man. McBride will throw it again. Or will it? Stepping up, trying to run, and he is engulfed at the 35-yard line. Second sack of the day for the Pittsburgh defense. Joe Conlon was providing that pressure. Well, tonight on CBS, it's night of all new drama, starting with The Fugitive, followed by the season's highest-rated new drama, CSI, Crime Scene Investigation. Then, Don Johnson, Cheech Marin star, and Nash Bridges. It's all here. Don't miss it tonight on CBS. Walt Harris, his team, just trying to hold on here. They lead it 38 to 22, but West Virginia is on the move again. Over eight minutes left in the fourth. McBride, running play. Colburn looks for a blocker, no one in front of him. And the Pittsburgh defense converts. Gerald Hayes with the stop. That's a gain of two, it'll be third and long. Nine, the biggest difference when West Virginia runs the counter tray as adverse to Pittsburgh, it's the Pittsburgh defense. One, penetration by the defense. Two, they have seven to eight men in the box at the line of scrimmage, and they just don't have enough blockers on the West Virginia side of the offense to combat the players on the defensive side of the ball for Pittsburgh. 
Colburn has had a quiet 19 carry 93 yard day. The numbers look pretty good, but after watching this game, you wouldn't say that they've been able to run the ball efficiently. Yeah, but in the beginning of the game, the first quarter and a half looked like he was off to a heck of a start. And it's been the rest of the game, he's just really bogged down. Had 80 yards in the first half, most of it on one run. West Virginia uses a timeout with 727 remaining in the fourth. We'll step aside, come back to Three River Stadium. Oh, we'll keep it right here. 38 to 22, Pittsburgh with the lead. I think both sides know that this is a huge third down. For West Virginia, you want to come away with some points. Obviously, they'd love to come away with a touchdown, but for Walt Harris, he has to go back in his mind and say, what happened to our offense? We were rolling with a run. We were throwing the pass down the field to play. Even with all the turnovers we've had in this game, this game shouldn't be close, but they stalled in the second half. They haven't been able to convert on third down, haven't been able to put points on the board in the fourth quarter, and West Virginia's taking advantage of it. Look at the Big East standings. These two years for Pittsburgh and West Virginia, the seasons they've had, remarkably similar. Same divisional record, overall record. Both had three-game losing streaks. And the biggest improvement, these two teams were down here in the past couple years at the bottom of the Big East. And they've made a role reversal, won some games, and now they're off to bowl games. And I still think either one of these teams will get to a bowl with six victories. It's going to be tough with new bowls added this year. I think that either one of these teams, because they've got marquee players and both travel well. But they can ensure the fact with a win here. West Virginia on a third and ten. Brown in motion. McBrien with a rush coming. Little dump off. Almost picked off by Spencer. Incomplete. And now the question becomes, do you go for it on a fourth down? They're down by 16 points. And here's the blitz by the Panthers. And right at the line of scrimmage, Antonio Brown not held up a tackle. He couldn't get off to get the pass. He's upset about it. He should be. Brian He's Beinecke. Going. Going across in motion, he wants to play, and that's where the pass is supposed to go. He gets tackled by Beinecke. Now oh, they are going for it. Fairly obvious choice. Trailing by two touchdowns and two two-point conversions. They get the playoff on a fourth and ten. McBrien throwing. Low throw. Catch made by Brown. And a flag down. A flag in the backfield. It's a first down for West Virginia if it stands. Amir Purifoy applying a hit on McBryant. And it'll be a first down either way. By the reception or the personal foul. Roughing the passer. They gained 11 through the air. And now Pittsburgh with some breakdowns and mistakes. Roughing the passer on the defense. Penalty is half the distance from where the play ended. First down. At the end of the play, Amir Purifoy, quarterback crouch right here. He's going to hit him late. And there's no need for that. And what a great job of concentration and catching the football. And that wasn't that much of a late hit, but here's a great job of Antonio Brown making his break for the ball. The concentration, it's thrown low. He slides down and makes the catch. The ball's low and behind him, but he adjusts to the football. They can still get a first down. It's first and 10 just outside of the 10. Under seven minutes left. Trailing 38 to 22, West Virginia on a handoff. Colburn remaining on his feet. Pushed forward inside the five. Ryan Smith applying some of the force in the wrong direction. Smith tried to tackle him and ended up pushing him an extra two yards. Right, the interior three, able to sustain their blocks right here. Watch the interior three. Get into their blocks, keep their feet moving, and look at the hole that's generating the push on the front four of the defensive line of the Pittsburgh Panthers. You look at Rick Gillian, 6'6", 345 as a center. Usually that's an offensive tackle. He plays the center position, one of the biggest centers in the country. On second and goal, McBrien falls down on the bootleg. Brian Knight will be given credit for the sack. 11 and a half now on the season. And Brian Knight will take this. This is almost a gimme sack. And, and quarterback Scott McBrien stumbles on this play, tries to get the open boot. He sees 57 in front of him, and Brian Knight tries to make a move. And that was an easy sack for Brian Knight. That's like a cheater running down a rap. Pittsburgh 35th team sack. Leading the conference, and now a third and 14. A loss of 11 on the play. 
McBrien for West Virginia. Little play action. McBrien, timing pattern to the end zone and dropped. Corey Ivey. He was left alone. Oh, what a huge, huge play. And this is so unlike Corey Ivey. An outstanding job, making his move to the inside. Hint inside, plant come outside, he spins around. Shantae Spencer, he's wide open. Ball's this is there. an easy catch. This is one you're supposed to catch with your eyes closed. And Corey Ivey couldn't come down with oh. a touchdown reception right between his fingertips. The sure-handed Corey Ivey had an opportunity to put some more pressure on Pittsburgh. Instead, it's a fourth and 14, and the pressure is on West Virginia. Mountaineers forced to take a timeout. West Virginia, that is their second timeout of the half. They have one timeout remaining with 532 left in the fourth. 38 to 22, Pittsburgh leading it. You've got your Unix platform, you've got your NT platform, you've got your PC platform, you've got your PDA platform and your legacy platform. You've got different companies with different platforms trying to get their platforms to talk to each other. And you've got a whole lot of stressed out, overworked, underpaid, underappreciated human beings who just want the whole thing to make sense by the time they get to the office. That's going to take some serious software. It's a different kind of world. We need a different kind of software. Trust your battery. Apparently, some people don't know Dremel also makes cordless rotary tools. Dremel cordless rotary tools. For every problem, there's a Dremel solution. A 13-story building loaded with explosives is about to come down on Don and Cheech. Hurry! And this time, we're out of time. they won't get out. Oh my God! All new Nash tonight. Crucial fourth down upcoming for West Virginia in what has been a very strange game here at Three Rivers. It is fourth and 14. McBrien has the protection. Throwing. Incomplete. Sean Terry was in the area. And a West Virginia gives it up on downs. Pittsburgh's offense will take over, leading 38-22. Nice job of Scott McBride stepping up in the pocket, getting his read. But I still think if he goes right over the middle of the field, he's got Antonio Brown one-on-one -on -one right at the goalpost. And Coach Rhodes, the defensive coordinator, on the celebration. They've got the 16-point cushion and the football. And Don Nealon's time as... Head coach of the West Virginia Mountaineers now trickling away unless this team can get into a bowl. Handoff. Harlow is at the game of his life. Breaking tackles. Loses the football. Out of bounds. Did West Virginia get it before? Grant Wiley claiming that he was able to corral the football, but the officials aren't buying it. Take another look at it. Keevan Barlow needs to hold on to that ball a little bit better. He's got one arm, and he's just trying to pick up the additional yardage. But a nice job of the defense of West Virginia stripping the ball that goes out of bounds. The Mountaineers' defense can't come up. 5.21 remaining in the fourth. Pittsburgh now facing a first and ten. Line of scrimmage is just shy of the 32. Now the clock begins to roll. Pittsburgh five minutes away from a 7-4 and four season. The best year under head coach Walt Harris's four-year tenure. Barlow. 
brought down after a gain of five, James Davis out of Stewart, Florida, making that stop. Davis, you want to talk about having the game of your life. In his first college start last week, four sacks, three of them came on one series. 11 tackles for Davis. Well, today's player of the game presented by Solomon Smith Barney, and it's got to be Keevan Barlow. 28 carries, 258 yards, four touchdowns. He goes over 1,000 yards for the season. Keevan Barlow, our player of the game. Watch in December when Solomon Smith Barney presents the CBS Sports College Football Player of the Year Award. Hand off Barlow once again. As we count it down, close to the four minute mark, Ben Meehan making the stop. West Virginia has the one timeout remaining. And it will be third and short upcoming. It's going to be nothing fancy for the Pittsburgh offense. They're going to hand the ball off to Keevan Barlow. They're going to take time off the clock. I think right now, Walt Harris has it set in his mind. He's going to play it safe at this point on because during this game, they've made a lot of mistakes offensively with their turnovers and forcing the football. And mistakes that did not come back to haunt them. That's where they were very lucky. And I think he has to go over and hug his defensive coordinator when this game is over and Paul Hills. On a third and three, can they keep this drive alive? Yes. Keevan Barlow. Five yards and a new set of downs for Pittsburgh. John Hackett had a chance to bring him down before he got to the marker. He could not. And Barlow will keep this clock moving once they set the football. 30 carries, 265 yards. Now that's a huge game for Keevan Barlow. We talked about it's his career game. And in the back of his mind, if somebody told him the numbers that he has right now, he'd probably want to push for 300 yards in this game because the offensive line is doing a yeoman's job up front, and Keevan Barlow's been doing an outstanding job by himself breaking the tackles. And I said it earlier, he does not go down on the first tackle. He runs through the first tackle. First and 10 from the 45. It's Barlow. And he's hit behind the line of scrimmage. Barlow with the ball. Good penetration from the West Virginia defense. Cortez McNeil helping to lead that charge. And I think now you're looking at the big picture for West Virginia. Where do they go from here? It's been rumored that they have a coach in line to take over at this point. But this is a program that Don Nealon, from day one, he came into this program. He's really turned the program around. And we can't say that enough times about West Virginia University. And you look at the players now. They kind of wonder what's the next step, particularly the younger players, the freshmen, the sophomores that have a long time left at West Virginia. Well, we talked to Don Nealon. He said that he felt it was time. He needed a change. He felt the school needed a change as well. Barlow out to the 50-yard line for a gain of six. You know, with Nealon, there was some speculation as the season started. Would this be his last year? But in talking to some of the players, a couple were shocked. A couple weren't all that surprised. There was this air of uncertainty around the program on what the decision would be by Don Nealon. And I think it was his decision. I think he's going out. He's going out with a winning record. I, I think for Don Neal in, in this situation, that, you know, he can look back at a program that he put a lot of work to, into a lot of blood, a lot of sweat, a lot of tears. And one thing, he came out of one. Handoff. Barlow met on a third down at the line of scrimmage. He was able to maybe pick up a yard, but not nearly enough for the first down. Grant Wiley with the hit. And a timeout call by West Virginia with a minute 38 left in the fourth. Mountaineers use their final timeout. The time is running out on Don Nealon and company. Okay, you're next. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Get your hands in. Get your hands in. That's it. We're gonna fight, fight, fight all day and night. Woo! Woo! Okay, you made it. See you on game day. Yes! Nineteen eighty-five. Coach gives us sideline passes. Texas is football, and I never miss a game. We got Chief Osceola. We got Renegade the Horse. We got the Flame and Spear. Florida fans. Back in Pittsburgh on a fourth down with a minute 38 left. Pittsburgh will punt it with Andy Lee. Needless to say, West Virginia needs a touchdown on this return. Antonio Brown will go down. 
just shy of the 20 yard line. So they're down by two touchdowns and two extra points with a minute 30 left. A West Virginia offense that has taken some time to get into gear today. Scott McBrien did a nice job. The freshman stepping in for Brad Lewis. Still not sure if it was the Lewis hand injury or if it was ineffectiveness that made Don Nealon go with the young QB. I would think it was a combination of both in this game. He wanted to add a spark. And what a lot of coaches will do is they'll change their quarterbacks to hopefully give their offense a team a lift and move the football and put points on the board. And that's exactly what Scott McBrien's done. One mention on Barlow, it's the second best rushing day in Pittsburgh history. 33 carries, 272 yards, second only to Tony Dorsett, who did it against Notre Dame in 75. Throwing the bomb, it's incomplete. And a flag down. Phil Braxton was the wide receiver down the sideline. Teron Gray may have been the man that bumped him. Flag on the field. And if this is pass interference, West Virginia will stay in it. Pass interference on the defense. 15-yard penalty from the line of scrimmage. First down. Teron Gray is running stride for stride here, and he's just going to cut Phil Braxton off, put the arm bar, the left arm, in front of him. The official's right on the spot. He sees exactly what's going on. Turns out to be a 15-yard penalty. Don't even know if that was a catchable ball, but it's irrelevant right now. McBrien now with a first and 10. Ball spotted just shy of the 35. 38-22, Panthers. Pittsburgh started the season 5-1, then suffered a three-game losing streak to Virginia Tech, North Carolina, and Miami. Snapped it last week with a 7-0 win over Temple, making them bowl eligible. Now trying to move to 7-4. McBrien guns and dropped Corey Ivey. Corey Ivey has the drops the last couple of passes, and it's a concentration factor at this point. And it settles in. In my senior year, at the end of the game, you're always thinking about, this is the last time I'm suiting up. This is the last game I'm playing. And for Corey Ivey, here's a receiver that rarely misses balls like this. These are balls he always catches 99 out of 100 times. And I think the touchdown at the end zone that he should have caught, that he dropped, that it wasn't a touchdown. I think at that play, that pass that he didn't catch, I think that's probably playing in the back of his mind. No, the illustration for him in terms of consistency would be the 39 straight games with at least a catch, a Big East record. Now a second and 10. Still a minute 21 remaining. McBrien, quarterback keeper. And McBrien with a modest gain of four yards. Gary Urschler making that stop. Clock is moving. West Virginia does not have a timeout. And this is a third and five. Out of the shotgun. Under a minute left now on the fourth. Here's McBrien stepping up and throwing. In stride, Phil Braxton. All the way for the touchdown. 60 yards. And this is still up in the air. This has really been a bizarre game. It has been a bizarre game, but one thing about this game, the teams have not given up. They fought from play one, and Phil Braxton beats Teron Gray one-on-one. -on -one. It's an easy play to the inside, uses his body to get in front of him. A nice pass by quarterback Scott McBride, but in a rivalry game, you don't give up until the game's over, the last play of the game, and neither of these teams are giving up. It's been a seesaw battle in this game. The Pittsburgh Panthers has taken a big lead. West Virginia didn't give up. They kept coming back. Pittsburgh turned the ball over. West Virginia couldn't capitalize, but in the second half, they've come roaring back. Well, they need this two-point conversion and an onside kick just to keep the intrigue alive. Ten-point disparity. Throwing, McBrien, knocked away. McBrien's and barring some miraculous good. finish, Pittsburgh is going to win this football game. Gerald Hayes getting a piece of that defensively. Sean Burton, the tight end, was the target. Trying to run the quick slant across the field, but a nice job of Gerald Hayes of just getting his wingspan up, spreading those arms out, where quarterback Scott McBrien couldn't see his wide receiver, and he knocks the ball down. Gives us a chance to tell you the executive producer of the Home Depot College Football is Terry Ewart. Today's game produced by Victor Frank, directed by Suzanne Smith. Today's studio show produced by Vin DeVito and directed by Linda Molino. Coordinating producer of CBS Sports, Harold Bryan. Associate director for today's game, Deb Gelman. Broadcast associate, Mark Burkhart. Technical manager, Tom McCarthy. Technical director, Chris Romanek. And our thanks to Dave Freed, 
Jim Stamos and Butch Baird all helping out as well. Walt Harris really done a fine job with Pittsburgh. He told us he has so much respect for Don Nealon. Got to know him at the Big East meetings. Told us that here's a man that's coached for 21 years. Has grown to legendary status in the state of West Virginia, but no ego. It was just a, a very unselfish man. I think that's a huge compliment for anyone who's had a lot of success that your peers respect you and your peer coaches respect you in the Big East. Onside kick at them. Just trying to keep this game alive. We'll take a bounce. It was called. It was it before the 10 yards? Phil Braxton the catch. And it was. Pittsburgh will have the football. We'll take another look at the kick. And it and it doesn't go 10 yards. It goes about seven and a half. Well, with the leap he made, he made it, but 10, where but he caught it, it was it, yes. right, seven and a half, eight yards. And Pittsburgh will have it with 49 seconds left. West Virginia, no timeouts. And now the speculation, will this be Don Nealon's final game as head coach of the Mountaineers? Will they get a bull bid at six and five? And Walt Harris, speculation for him will be, can he get a towel in time to dry <laughs> off? Because he's going to a bowl game. What an effort by Kevin Barlow. A personal best for Barlow. And the Pittsburgh Panthers will wrap up the regular season at seven and four. Yeah, this is worth a look. The Powerade, it's not the Gatorade oh. anymore, it's the Powerade and <laughs> yeah, it's a bit chilly, coach. Now to 29 seconds left. The backyard brawl 93rd edition will go to the Pittsburgh Panthers after dropping seven of the last eight to Don Nealon's West Virginia Mountaineers. Walt Harris and the Panthers come out with a win. Final hurrah for Don Nealon after 21 years as the head coach in West Virginia. That's the end of the game with a final score. Pittsburgh 38, West Virginia 28. Yes, your team made it. A well, we made too many mistakes at the end and dropped some balls. Hey, Walt. Happy for you. Good luck. Coach Nealon, this is the way your regular season career ends. Your team made it put up a game effort. Well, we just made so many mistakes and dropped some passes. Didn't play very well early, but kids fought hard. Pitt did a nice job. Thank you. Coach, Don Nealon, thank you. Oh, oh, well, Don Nealon, the head coach of the West Virginia Mountaineers, and not the way this one was scripted to wrap up his 21 years of service with West Virginia. Mountaineers finish off the regular season at 6 and 5. Walt Harris and the Pittsburgh Panthers wrap it up at 7 and 4. 38 to 28, that's your final score. The Home Depot College Football here on CBS. Pittsburgh wins the backyard brawl at home, the final college game ever at Three Rivers Stadium. Hope you've enjoyed it. For Mark May, Dwayne Ball, and our entire CBS crew, this is Ian Eagle. Pittsburgh got off to a good start, took control of it in the third quarter. West Virginia made it interesting in the fourth, but in the end, too much. Keevan Barlow and the Panthers with a 38-28 win over West Virginia. Have a great holiday weekend, everybody. What do you want? You. And you won't believe who's behind it. The Fugitive, all new CBS Tonight. Nash Bridges, tonight on CBS. It's all here. Would you like to get more health coverage out of Medicare? Then write down this toll-free number for your free booklet, Getting More for Your Medicare Dollar. It shows you how easy it is to get more health coverage with Elder Plan. As you know, traditional Medicare only covers part of your bills. Supplemental plans cover more, but they're very expensive. However, when you choose Elder Plan as your health plan, 
you get 100% hospitalization, doctor coverage, generic prescriptions with no yearly limits, home nursing care, plus coverage for eyeglasses, hearing aids, and dentures. And this coverage costs you no extra money because Medicare pays Elder Plan a monthly amount to provide your health care. Read about Elder Plan with no cost or obligation. Call for your free copy of Getting More for Your Medicare Dollar. Get drug coverage, 100% hospitalization, and more by calling Elder Plan. 877-510-2632. It's the after Thanksgiving sale of sales at the Wiz, and every department is stuffed with hundreds of items on sale. Plus, the early bird gets the deals. Save extra between 8 and 9 a.m. Not only that, a sharp 27-inch stereo color TV with front and rear audio video inputs is just $228.88. And get an Iowa 3-CD mini system for an unbelievable $109.99. There's even extended hours to save and 12-month financing, too. But it all ends Sunday, so hurry in. This holiday season, get it right at the Wiz. Health Watch reports on CBS 2 News. Nobody has our sources. This is the CBS Evening News with Dan Rather. Continuing coverage of Campaign 2000, the battle for the White House. And good evening. Dan is off tonight. I'm John Roberts. In an unprecedented surprise move and a victory for George W. Bush, the United States Supreme Court to today agreed to hear arguments next Friday on whether the hand counts of Florida ballots are unconstitutional. But the justices did not stop recounts now underway in heavily Democratic Broward and Palm Beach counties. Eric Engberg is at the high court covering this extraordinary turn. Eric? Plunging right into the middle of the presidential election controversy, the Supreme Court today agreed to hear the case brought by George Bush to try to stop the Florida recount. In a one-page order carrying the ordinary-sounding legal title, Bush George W. versus Palm Beach County Canvassing Board, the court, for the first time in its history, jumped directly into the middle of a fight that could decide the presidency. The decision called a writ of certiorari orders attorneys for Bush and Gore and the state of Florida to appear before it next Friday at 10 a.m. to argue the case. Ninety minutes are allotted for these oral arguments. Written arguments will be filed next Tuesday. The critical issue before the court, whether the Florida Supreme Court overstepped in forcing state officials to include votes turned up in recounts in the final tally. As is always the case, the court's announcement that it would hear the case argued carried no hint of how the nine justices, seven appointed by Republican presidents, two by Bill Clinton, might ultimately vote. Because of the nature of the controversy, because of the quantity, because of the sense of feelings uh, in the country, it is possible that the court thinks that uh, it should have uh, uh, an expression on this matter, even if it means affirming the Florida court. Today's decision does nothing to stop the recounts in Florida, which continue tonight. And Sunday's certification deadline remains. Late today, the Florida legislature announced that it intended to become a party to the case, a case now headed to the highest court in the land. John. Eric Engberg at the Supreme Court, thanks. For more insight into what the Supreme Court did today and where it may go from here, we turn to CBS News legal consultant Jonathan Turley, who joins us now from Washington. So what did Governor Bush ask for and what might it mean for this election, Jonathan? Well, he didn't get all that he asked for. The court here limited the questions to just two. Did the Florida Supreme Court change the rules after the election in violation of federal law? And also, did it usurp the authority of the state legislature? Specifically, the court did not want to hear arguments on whether the equal protection rights of citizens in other counties were violated. How significant is it that the Florida legislature is planning to join the Bush petition? That's very significant. The Florida legislature is now becoming an active player for the first time. We've all been talking about the possibility that the state legislature could step in. The Constitution talks about the state legislature as the body who determines where the electoral votes and how they are selected uh, under these types of conditions. 
But there's some debate as to where that authority begins and ends. The Bush campaign insists that it rests with the state legislature how to resolve this controversy and how to deal with these votes. The Gore campaign says that authority rests with the courts. Does the Supreme Court hearing this case pose any potential dangers for the Bush campaign? You know, John, it does. You have to be careful what you ask for. First of all, because the legislature intervened, the Supreme Court could make some type of reference to its right later to take control of this issue. The Bush campaign has been talking about a special session in which the state legislature would come in and say this is how the electoral votes will be given to Washington, D.C. The Supreme Court could very well touch on that issue and it could be bad for the Bush campaign, although that seems unlikely. But but more importantly, they could take this issue into controversy and put into danger the Florida votes going to the Electoral College. Jonathan Turley in Washington. Thanks. Thank you. For the moment, the Bush campaign couldn't be happier that the high court took up this case, but their strategy to win does not stop there. Maureen Maher is in Austin, Texas, with more on that for us. Maureen. John, today's U.S. Supreme Court decision to hear the governor's appeal is being viewed as a clear victory by the Bush camp. However, as the recount continues to whittle away at Mr. Bush's slim lead in Florida, his attorneys today decided to plan out an endgame strategy, another one. This one includes in filing a lawsuit that could force the inclusion of some 500 military uh, ballots. That, of course, would give him a slim lead by Sunday's deadline, but a win nonetheless. Both of these court cases are all about solidifying an end game for the Bush camp because as one senior Bush aide tells CBS News, they are feeling that the vice president could push this all the way into January. Either way, whether there is a victory on Sunday night or sometime in the future, tonight George W. Bush is feeling extremely confident that he is going to be the next president. John. Maureen Maher in Austin, thanks. For its part, Team Gore is trying to accentuate the positive and find the silver lining in the Supreme Court's decision to review the Florida recounts. Bob Orr is at the White House with the Gore camp's reaction. Bob? Well, John, there's no doubt at all that Vice President Gore was surprised by the court's decision today. His campaign thought it was highly unlikely the court would even take the case, insisting that the Florida voting controversy was a matter for the state to decide. This afternoon, Gore's lead attorney, David Boyce, came out to try to put the best face on things, saying in the end he thinks Gore still will prevail. This is the kind of case that I think the court may very well feel is the kind of case it has an obligation to hear. There's a big difference between hearing an appeal. One of the things that I said when I've talked about this before is anybody can file an appeal, but winning appeal is something quite different. Some in the Gore campaign actually argue that the today's decision is a help for them in the public relations battle. They say it would be very hard for Governor George W. Bush to declare victory on Sunday, even if he's ahead with a pending review before the nation's highest court. John? Bob Orr at the White House, thanks. Amid the political and legal turmoil, the ballot counters in Florida's Broward and Palm Beach counties are still up against a Sunday evening deadline. Broward County says Gore has a net gain of more than 300 votes so far. Palm Beach County says Bush has gained 14 votes there so far. With the recounts incomplete and a few other tally changes, Gore appears to have whittled Bush's statewide lead down to about 700 votes now, give or take. Officially, without recounts included, Bush leads Gore by 930 votes out of almost 6 million cast. Our correspondents are at the scenes of the ongoing recount action, first at Bobby Harley in West Palm Beach. Bobby? Well, John, if the members of the Palm Beach County Canvassing Board heard about the U.S. Supreme Court's decision today, they didn't let on. They took up the ballot.